the documents and uh, yeah, but uh, I, I need to to speak with people today because yeah, I think it's Pascal who who, who invited me. Oh, nice! Shout out to mm-hmm. Pascal. Uh, well, great, great to have you here. Um, we're, we have a, uh, a new meeting agenda. I'll chat with you privately here in the chat when I get a moment and just make sure you're ready to go for today. Pascal probably has you ready to go, but okay. just in case. Um, and once again, if anyone else is tuning in and new, just let me know in the chat so I can help you. So one of the things we'll do today is go over the updated agenda. So everyone's on the same page with uh, the adjustments um, that we're making today. The main thing uh, is if you we're going to be doing a second round. So if you're if you're planning on moving on to a second round, just make sure you've allocated enough time. If you normally stay for the duration of the whole meeting, uh, the average meeting length of, the, of these meetings, then you're, you should be good to go. Um, but just just make sure you're, you're prepared. Otherwise, uh, we'd advise you maybe don't move on to the next round if you don't really have time to participate. Um, so I'll pause there. And uh, Dan, if you have anything you'd like to mention if anyone has any questions or comments, um, we'll just allow a moment for some Q&A and um, here in a little bit, we'll get into the agenda. All right, well, I'd like to uh, put a shout out to Mike Manfredi and Gregory Wexler, uh, who spent a lot of time uh, refining the proposal that we've approved into something that's uh, mathematically uh, better defined. Um, and uh, so that's, we've been updating our spreadsheets to prepare for today's meeting uh, and testing out the formulas. I made a blog post uh, last night uh, where I outlined some of the updated math uh, that I believe captures the intent of the original post. Uh, I know that uh, some people like Matt Langston have been reaching out and um, some questions about the math that we're proposing and how it relates to the original distribution. Um, so I'm happy to take some of those questions. Um, one of the things that we have the benefit of with subjective governance is that if there are errors or mistakes, we can reach consensus on how to fix them. Uh, and so, uh, you know, even though there's math out there right now, we can all agree to whatever interpretation of the events, as long as we're gathering the data of the ranking each week, we can we can correct things if necessary. I don't believe that's going to be necessary, but uh, that is a, a safety blanket we have. Um, we're currently doing this manually, but the intention is to boil the subjective and somewhat fuzzy, perhaps ambiguous cases down into actual software code that runs on a blockchain in a deterministic manner. The purpose of the blockchain and determinism is so that there is very little dispute because we've all agreed on the specific code that's producing specific numbers instead of everyone trying to interpret a blog post with some rough description of what's supposed to happen. So that's uh, that's the direction we're going. Um, so we've, you know, if you haven't checked, if you care about the math, go ahead and check it out. If not, uh, you can just trust that we're doing things as um, accurately as we can uh, for that. So that's a lot of what's been going on this week. Um, and of course, uh, the Fractally team is working very tirelessly behind the scenes to prepare for the release of our open source blockchain um, software, the first, I guess, beta release. Um, by the end of summer. So our, our goal is to have that out before uh, EOS can activate their hard fork. Um, so that's a little competition in the space. Um, but that's, uh, I'm open to any questions, um, particularly if there's any questions about how things are gonna operate today. Maybe Joshua can go over the exact schedule. Yeah, I don't see any hands up, so I'll go ahead and dive into the schedule. Okay, Carlos, uh, as soon as I go over the schedule, I'll chat with you here, and wel- welcome to the meeting. Um, all right, so basically going forward, the new format is we're opening up. Uh, the, we, we've gotten rid of the pre-meeting, basically, and there's only one event page 
it's actually a new, uh, it's kind of a new event page because I moved it and I didn't know this would happen, but it got rid of the RSVPs. So if you um, get a chance and maybe I'll put the link in later, just make sure you RSVP if you want to get uh, easy notifications. Um, but basically uh, the, the new format is uh, we just, as usual, we do a Q&A for 45 minutes. And uh, if you're if you're new, the main thing is you need to have your Hive user account and you need to... Um, you need to sign the contributor agreement. And then here in a moment, I'll post the uh, the Hive blog post that we're going to use today in the Zoom chat as, as we do every week. And um, it's important now more than ever to make sure that you add your Hive user account into your Zoom uh, name because we're going to need to reference that for those who are moving on to round two. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a magic show during our intermission is what I've been referring to it to Gregory as. Um, because, um, only, only the people, basically you're going to be leaving the meeting if you're not moving on to round two. And if you don't have your, your name and your hive user account, and we can't identify you, then you may just get removed from the meeting, uh, as we remove people and lock it, uh, so that we can do the second round of breakouts. So make sure you have your hive user name, uh, in your, in your zoom name so we can identify you. Um, then, uh, after, once we get to, uh, well, for, for me, it would be 11, uh, 15 central time. So if you're in a different part of the world, you have to recalculate that, but then we will start our breakout rooms. Usually the first 25 minutes of the room is people, uh, sharing, um, their, their recent contributions that they're representing either as individuals or on behalf of their teams. Also a reminder to make sure that you are properly representing your team's contributions. If you want the team to be earning the respect it deserves. And, um, and then it, it doesn't have to be 25 minutes, but that's kind of a suggestion. And then the last 20 minutes of the 45 minute breakout room session is your process of reaching consensus. So this part is the same in terms of sharing the contributions. Um, and these are kind of our guidelines for doing that, but the consensus process has kind of changed a little bit. So in, in, in your process this week, in your first breakout room, what you're, what you're looking to do is decide which three members, uh, based on the contributions they're representing, are going to advance to the second round. Uh, and so you, there's different ways you can approach this. Uh, again, these are, these are kind of guidelines and suggestions, but uh, to determine uh, the levels of the remaining members is, is what you do after you decide who's going to move on to the, um, to the, to the second round which would be our normal process. Um, so again, the three people are gonna move on to round two and it doesn't really matter what order you you put them in. Uh, you just need to decide who those three people are based on the contributions they're representing. May and I recommend that go ahead, for, the, for the sake of consistency and everyone reporting the same thing, that we put the top three in alphabetical order. Um, that way we can all at least reach consensus and not necessarily bias uh, the ranking of the top three. Yeah, that'll actually make it easier on the manual accounting side. So I appreciate you mentioning that. So what? just to reiterate what Dan said, when you post your consensus results, it's still going to be at username with the commas and stuff. But the first three people uh, are going to be the first three people that you've decided are going to move on. They will be posted in alphabetical order. Um, and then the last three people, the order matters because this is, this is based on the level of respect that's going to be allocated to them. And these, these final depends on how many people in your room, but it, the final two or three people will not uh, be moving on to round two. Um, but they, they will still be getting allocated respect. So the order, um, for these people, you can just use probably the normal process. So you identify who has contributed. Uh, the most relative to their past uh, recognition, um, and uh, and and they get uh, if you have a if you have a room that's four of six, or or a three of three of five, then you just need um, you need four of six agreement in a breakout room of six, or you need three of five agreement uh, if if you just have a breakout room of five, um, and so this uh, this first uh, person that you're that you're putting in, in an actual specific order, they'll get the level of three, which is not totally important uh, to, to know that to participate today, but that's 
That's the amount of respect they'll be getting is what we consider to be level three respect. And then you'll just go through the process like we normally do. You'll identify uh, the second best contribution uh, in terms of the the the, la the tail end here of the of the group participants, and they'll get level two. Um, and uh, once you have got the correct order, then as normal, you're gonna you're gonna post someone uh, on behalf of the group is gonna post this in the in the Zoom chat. And you're going to confirm are the usernames correct is the order correct based on our consensus and once that is correctly formatted just like we have here so the first three are going to be alphabetical username space comma and then the last three are going to be based on the the usual process uh, first three people move on to round two last three people uh just just get uh, allocated respect and and they're they're finished after this round once they uh, post their consensus yeah. results i'd like to suggest they each group, um, different groups try different processes. So since uh, the last three, the highest three, the order of the highest levels don't matter, perhaps we, should, we some groups could try a inverse, identify the least contributor, the next least contributor and so forth. And then whoever's left over advances. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is the, uh, if you advance to the next round, and you end up being the lowest ranked in this next round, you are in the same amount of respect as if you were level three in the first round. So you're not guaranteed to get more respect just because you move forward. Um, and that's uh, a critical balancing act uh, to consider if you want to take the extra time to move forward. Uh, you're not guaranteed more. So that's... Um, what are the details that to keep in mind? Uh, thank you, Dan. And uh, if, again, we can we can add we can go for questions here in a moment. But I, just for the sake of uh, time, I'm going to just move on to the next part. So after we go through our 45 minute breakout rooms and we go through this process that we just talked about, then we will have a 15 minute intermission. So it, as soon as you reach consensus, or as soon as your breakout room uh, ends. Uh, you, you then need to post your consensus results correctly formatted like like we just talked about. Um, if you're uh, if you're not advancing to round two, then uh, basically we would ask you to leave the Zoom meeting. And optionally, if you want, you can go hang out in the Discord. We have a we have a hangout voice chat there if you want to hang out with other members, uh, which is something that we typically do after these meetings. Uh, some of us. Uh, you can you can do that or just go about enjoying your weekend. But the most important thing is just leave the Zoom room um, so that we can uh, we can identify. Basically, in this 15 minutes, we have to identify who are the people that are moving on. Those are the only people that should be in the room. We'll be kicking people out who shouldn't be in the room. It's easier if you just uh, leave the room. There's less people to have to uh, to deal with and go through that process. Um, so it, that's why it's important that you post your results immediately because we need to immediately identify who is moving on to round uh, two. And as normal, if you don't post your results or you post it incorrectly, then you, you'll probably get zero respect. Um, so that uh, that is what we'll do in our 15 minute intermission. And then uh, following that, um, I, for, for me and for some of us, it'll be uh, 12, 15 central time. Uh, after that 15 minute intermission, we will then do another 45 minute breakout session. Um, and uh, this will only be the people, the three people from each group that moved on to round two. And we will lock the Zoom meeting to prevent, um, you know, any, any extra confusion. So hopefully you don't have a bad connection um, and, and you fall off the meeting, which does happen sometimes um, and maybe just don't even move on to round two if you know that you have a bad connection uh, or um, or take the risk, but you you might end up with zero respect because the meeting will be locked. You won't be able to get back in the meeting. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so in this process, what you're going to do is you're going to determine uh, the, the levels of respect for the members very much like we we normally do. So you're going to identify, we're going to go through the process, who has contributed the most relative to their, their past recognition. And uh, depending on the size of your group, you need to get, uh, you know, a four of six agreement or a three of five agreement. And uh, the first level uh, contribution is going to, that, that 
whoever, what, whoever that individual is representing themselves or a team, they're going to get the level eight respect. And, uh, and then you'll go through the process of identifying the next level, which will be level seven. And you'll just keep going through that process like we normally do. And you'll put people in the order of uh, highest to, to lowest as we normally do. Um, and uh, once every, you know, as, as usual, once everyone uh, has agreed on that, make sure the usernames are correct, make sure it's formatted correctly. Uh, then uh, everyone's going to copy and paste that and you'll post another comment on the same Hive blog post. Uh, and we'll be able to differentiate based on uh, the, the timestamps. Um, so that, that is it. After, basically, after soon as you reach consensus or after the 45-minute breakout room closes, uh, post that immediately and, and we'll have uh, we'll have like a 15 minute wind down closing Q and a, uh, and, and then optionally, some people can go to the discord to hang out if they want for like an after party and that's it. So the meeting length is similar to what we normally do, except for, uh, the format has changed as you can see. So we'll take any, any questions now, uh, and I'll post this link again in case, uh, people just join in for some reason, they're not seeing it in the chat. So raise, raise your hand if you have any questions. Wow. You've done a really good job of putting that together, Joshua. I think that uh, the lack of questions is a, is a good sign uh, from that perspective. Either that or everyone is so confused they don't even know what to ask. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll take the optimistic interpretation of that. Um, one of the things that comes to my mind as something that we can do uh, to improve uh, the effectiveness of the community uh, is to reach consensus on some things that we all value, um, things that aren't getting done that you'd like to see done. Um, so uh, I, I would call these uh, shovel-ready jobs. Um, and maybe if we organize the a section on Hive or on gofractly.com where you can make requests for things that you'd like to see done and other people can volunteer to do them. Uh, and if we can kind of create an economy of serving one another uh, through requests and, and fulfilling of those requests, then that could be a great way of adding value and, and getting respect. Um, because I think a lot of the problems we have is we're all just kind of going about our lives, trying to guess what might be valuable, talking about it. But you know, if there's an actual request, well, that's deemed valuable by at least one member of the community. And if other members like it or upvote it, that's a sign that a lot of people like that to be done. And uh, someone who just wants to earn some respect can go and do that thing. So uh, I think that getting a job board so to speak, where you can make requests. Um, you know, if you imagine this was an HOA, a request might be, hey, can somebody weed the, the uh, common area because it's growing out of control? Or maybe we need some new plants, or maybe someone needs to pick up the trash, uh, or maybe we, someone needs to host a block party. Whatever those types of things are, you can put requests of things that you see need to be done, but for some reason, uh, either you lack the skill or the time to do so. Uh, and if we could start organizing it. So my request is that somebody organize uh, our job board request board and then present it to the, to the group. Um, and then as people come in and say, how do I get involved? How do I earn respect? You can say, can you do any of these things? And they say, yeah, I can do that. And it's a lot easier to say yes to something that you know how to do than try to be creative in coming up with those things to do. Um, so that's my proposal uh, for the community to consider this week. Um, open to other ideas or feedback on that. Fabrice. So hi everyone. 
Uh, hi, Dan. I mean, I, 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 how can I present myself? A, a long time observer learner, if I could put it this way. Just reflecting a bit, I wanted to ask to Dan, because as a, an outside learner, I'm a bit confused. And my question, as part of this project that we are, we are, we are joining, what culture do you want to preserve? Is it a culture of collaboration, cooperation, or competition and corporate? How do we reflect it? Because I, I tend to feel like we are moving more on a kind of competitive way of, you know, going less than the the, the, the collaborative kind of corporate. Co How do you reflect you on that? Yeah. I'm going to submit to you that it can be both. Okay. Imagine you, you've got a cross country team. I mentioned cross country because I used to do cross country. Uh, you're competing against each other to get the best time, but you're also cooperating with each other to advance your whole, your whole team. Um, and so by working together and encouraging one, each other, right, we all advance together. Uh, and we're competing to see who can do the most to help the cooperative effort. Uh, so we're, it, the competition is to see who can be most cooperative in, in achieving the community's goals. Uh, and it's uh, whether you view it as cooperation or competition, I guess, is a mindset of, uh, is this a scarcity mindset or an abundance mindset? If uh, you think that in order for you to win, other people have to lose, that's probably the wrong way to approach this. But if you view that we can all win and we all win, like we're all making contributions to benefit all of us, or at least we're trying to. Uh, and regardless of who wins on each any particular ranking, uh, that's, um, that's just feedback, right? It's feedback that, hey, according to everyone else here, this person is doing more for the public good, the, the common good than I'm doing. What can I do to contribute like they are contributing? Uh, and, and then if you start doing what does that, then you're gonna start doing better, right? And so each of us is faced with a challenge of trying to assess what's in demand and meet that demand um, as best as possible. So yes, there's a, it could be viewed as competitive in the ranking, but I, I view that more of as, uh, as feedback, it's like, it's like the person with the stopwatch reporting your time. Uh, you know, you're like, oh, I did better or worse this week than last week. All right, let's, let's see how I can improve. Uh, and we're not judging people, we're judging contributions. So um, yeah. you know, I, I think that's my long-winded answer. Okay. Is maybe just to reflect on that, yeah. I, I very much appreciate, but maybe for to get, uh, that could create another bottleneck on bringing new people because explaining it all together, I, at least from my perspective, I'm just sharing maybe my perspective here, you know, because it could create a new bottleneck on how to, you know, uh, 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 bring people on board uh, regarding all this. I knew it's just maybe a, a, a subjection, maybe for reflecting on the whole process a bit on how can we, you know, keeping, you know, competition is normal. Life is about competition, you know, uh, in a certain way, you know, against anyone or, you know, but how do you make it, maybe thinking a bit on the culture. I feel like the culture is a bit getting fuzzy from what, when I started, the way I saw the culture that you were pushing forward and where we are now, you know, it's a bit fuzzy. It's just maybe a point for, for reflecting uh, on it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the early phases and this is why I think the job board um, request list um, would be helpful is to help give people an idea of the things they can do. And the more things you check off on that, the better you're doing. So it's a, it's a easier way to make progress versus shooting in the dark. Um, but the, uh, this is the, the purpose in the, the original fractal white paper. I basically said one plus one is three. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. We are producing value by cooperating. Uh, if we cease cooperating and we start fighting over the scraps, uh, we're now destroying value, uh, not only in the opportunity cost, but the time spent fighting over 
who gets what slice of the pie is not time spent growing the pie. So uh, cooperation is good and competing to contribute the most is good. Competing to divide scraps in a non-productive way is not good. Uh, and so uh, that's one of the things that we will need to keep an eye on and try to communicate to people. Eric. The most inspiring thing in the last few months was the idea of public goods and trying to get my head around that. And it would seem like a job board that would be directed towards solving agreed on problems on a local national level would be very interesting. And so the whole of the effort would be then applied to what would be considered strategic as a group. Yeah, um, having a, a mission that's greater than what we're doing that's impacting other people, sort of an outreach thing where our community is giving a little bit to the world. We're not just focused on meeting the public or the club goods of us, but uh, donating to others might be a way of raising awareness uh, and getting more people involved. I, I like that concept. Um, Matt. Thank you, Dan. I would very much value a job board. I have. You have connection issues, apparently. <laughs> Um, Josh, is the uh, DWORK platform that you created ready to be pitched to people or is that still in progress? Uh, it It's ready. I, I'm working on a video to walk through and explain it, but um, I can just demo it really quick if, if you want. Looks like Matt's back. Do you want to finish your thought, Matt? I'll try. Thank you. Um, I would value, I have in my mind several shovel ready jobs and I would value a job board to post them on. And um, so I'll use this Zoom call as a job board. So I would value, and I will uh, give you respect and argue on your behalf, a glossary and an index for more equal animals to help me teach from that book. So I lead several small group discussions and my students want a glossary and an index. So I would be your advocate if you created one. I would sing your praises and give you respect in meetings. So that's one example of a shovel ready job that anyone could do. I agree. I agree. I would, I would also uh, take that and incorporate it into the PDF so that it can be incorporated in a future edition. All right, so I'll just share real quick. Um, so this is something that we set up that works with our, with our Discord. Uh, it's probably kind of small, but it's called uh, D work and you can log in with your discord. And then if you have a, um, a Genesis fractal user role, then you can interact with this board. Um, and there's other things in here, like there's community suggestions. So uh, Marco left a suggestion, which I think is kind of what Dan was hinting at. Um, looks like uh, Jin, uh, I'm, I guess, I'm not sure who this is, but uh, there's two suggestions uh, from this person. And you could upvote them kind of like a like a feature request sort of thing if you're used to like canny.io and those kind of things, which are common for software platforms. So th these are things that uh, people are saying they'd like to see happen and you can upvote them. And then uh, you can also just take on something that's on the Kanban board or, or put things on it. We can also add, we can start to segment the board by adding like a subspace or a project. Underneath it, we can create additional spaces right now just to keep it simple. We just have the one space and we can do various different things. Um, uh, very, there's interesting settings in here. So this works well uh, if, you, if, if you're into uh, using it. If basically you do need the proper role in Discord. So if you don't have the Genesis Fractal role in the Fractally uh, Discord, then just reach out to me and I'll give that to you. And I'll make a I'll make a complete video walking through this, um, but just a little teaser of it, one possible solution we could use for now. All right, thank you. That's a very interesting tool you're putting there, Joshua. Jordan. Uh, hi. Yeah, I just wanted to also second the uh, value to myself of of uh, a job board uh, kind of thing, and uh, for me at least, I'm very much interested in using it to um, uh, collect data about this process. I, I'd like to model the process. And so just as a quick example, 
you know, um, uh, the videos that we're having, um, people can hand annotate them for certain kinds of features um, that we can agree upon. Um, and, and so th that, that kind of could be extremely useful for understanding how this process is working and, and uh, how the changes that we're making are, are affecting our discussions. So it's a great idea. Excellent. Just, just to affirm what you're saying, Daniel. Uh, so a new, a newer member. I don't, I don't think he's here today, but I've been chatting with him in Telegram. Uh, and uh, basically, the the person was asking uh, the reason why I set up the D work was because he was asking, like, hey, uh, what what is some stuff going on that I can just get in here and contribute to? Um, and that was their experience in other DAO like communities. Um, and and so I think your line of thinking is just totally in line with. The user experience people are expecting today. Um, there's a percentage of people that want what you're saying. As we get closer to open sourcing our code, uh, there's going to be a lot of work for software developers uh, in, the, in the forms of testing and bug fixes um, and a long list of stuff that our team wants to do, but we don't have time to get to. Um, and so that will create a lot of work for that type of um, contribution. So. Um, could you remind me, Joshua, last week, did I talk about the fact that there's a, uh, the economics are a rank order in Austrian economics and, uh, there's no way to actually do math between things. I think I talked about that last week. Do you want to just briefly re recap in case anyone didn't get that? Um, oh, once again, you know, Jordan mentioned modeling the process. Uh, and one of the, the challenges is um, people's preferences are multidimensional. What we value is multidimensional. And so uh, while there might, in any particular value scale, or the order might be transitive, but across multiple scales, it's not necessarily transitive based on uh, the items uh, that you're considering. So we're trying to integrate all of our collective values um, and uh, reward those who are most aligned with the collective values the most um, on average over time. Uh, and so that's, that's the challenge that the modeling software needs to face. And I'd be very curious to see more studies in that realm. Um, so I just did a, an interview this week uh, with Eric, uh, and he's down there. <laughs> he's got a picture of me from the interview. Uh, so yeah, there's evidence that you know, I, I really look forward to talking about the legal status of DAOs uh, and organizations. Um, I think we need more work like that. Um, some of the uh, to do work items that I would, I would love to see is more material uh, about um, how to set up new DAOs, um, new fractals, uh, you know, how to replicate what we're doing here. Uh, and I would encourage anyone who's trying to start a new fractal, whether it's like the Eden fractal for, or the uh, BitShares fractal, that you join this fractal first until you get 20 or 30 people here from your fractal as part of this fractal, uh, and, and maybe even a little bit longer, and then create your second fractal rather than trying to start small. So just invite everyone to this, like this, this community of people doing fractal governance is small enough right now that we need all the manpower we can behind um, learning the process, proving the process, uh, and, and so forth, rather than uh, dividing so much. So if we can get as many members from these other fractals to join our fractal on a regular basis, um, I think that would be highly valuable to the overall concept of fractal governance. If they want to have a, their fractal on the side as well, that's also good, but I would, I would encourage uh, anyone who's involved in any fractal governance anywhere to participate in what we're doing here so that we can really push 
the concept of fractal governance forward. Um, one of the things that we're looking at this week, uh, it's, uh, it's a challenging problem in its own right, is the most effective process for selecting block producers for a fractal. And uh, you know, the simplest process is you just ask the council to appoint them all. Um, but um, you know, I'm, I'm open to ideas. And so if there's any brainstorming available uh, and I wanna keep these ideas from in line with the perspective that we don't want block producers to actually be part of the governance process on this new chain. This is the governance process. The block producers uh, will actually be infrastructure providers um, and they will be hosting all the tools necessary to interact with the blockchain uh, and they would be doing so publicly and accountably. And to the extent that they're uh, participating in governance, it is only on deciding which transactions to include in the block and reporting on how long it took. So we're looking for ways of uh, selecting them that is not, uh, that minimizes the amount of work for the community as a whole, that recognizes rational ignorance um, and so forth. Um, and one of the things that's become apparent is if you want five or seven block producers, well, the council is not even five or seven people. If you just, you have to have five to seven teams just to get to that threshold of that number of block producers. So we'll need to grow quite substantially because I'd like to have block producers not be anonymous people that are not participating in these meetings. That's one of the uh, requirements that I'd like to, to have. Um, and so we'll, we'll need to grow. What that means is that most fractals that are only 20 people will not want to run their own blockchain. They will be running on the main infrastructure provided by our blockchain that we're putting together, which will facilitate, uh, I guess, bootstrapping fractals, right? It's like working at WeWork while you grow big enough to have your own office. Um, that's the analogy. Uh, and then, um, you know, that helps our community be the incubator and the infrastructure provider for all these small organizations, small communities that we will be bootstrapping. Um, so uh, let's put that out there that there is a need for uh, people that are skilled in infrastructure provision to join our community, to start participating and earning respect because I would like every block producer to have a bond. One of the ideas that I'm thinking, now all these are just ideas. These are not uh, formal proposals right now. So I'm putting this out there so I can get feedback uh, early and correct things before I even introduce a proposal. I would like producers to compete to post the biggest bond in terms of total respect um, so that the block producers have the most to lose. And this bond would be subject to the council's consensus on whether or not the producer is living up to the, their side of the contract, which is to host infrastructure in a reliable, non-biased way, right? To run the software the community says they should run uh, at the level of performance they are expected to uh, do so. Uh, and if any block producer doesn't abide by that subjective approval of the council, their bond is what is at stake. And so the greater the bond, the more trust there is in the block producers and the more we can rely on them to be honestly hosting their infrastructure. Um, so that is, those are some of the variables I'm considering. Uh, and I'd like to hear any feedback from the community, but we've split out in three minutes. So uh, Felix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So sorry, this is a little off off the topic of this. I was just curious about any updates on the, the new user agreement. Yes, um, Gregory and I met with some attorneys uh, who are reviewing it and uh, they're supposed to get back to us, I guess next week. Uh, and once they get back to us with their revisions, we will be um, publishing that as well. Um, we're trying to avoid publishing it too, too many versions of these things while it's under development just to minimize confusion. 
but uh, yeah, we should be hearing back from them. So a lot of good feedback, um, but as these things go, uh, whenever we meet with attorneys, it's us spending 90% of the time educating them and them spending 10% of the time saying, we're gonna to have to go research that. <laughs> um, so we will, uh, yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to the um, feedback they provide to provide a robust system that protects all of us uh, and is well-defined. Well Igor. Hi, um, back to the question of scalability that you mentioned. I would like to have uh, my fractal secured by members of the fractal itself only. I get curious about scalability, if it would be possible. To, you like that? To have uh, our fractal uh, like running on our own chain. Yes. Yes, we're producing open source software that allows anyone to um, host the chain and the chain will be governed by fractal governance, just like the process we're using here. The initial distribution of the token will be based on the distribution of this fractal. Um, and uh, each of us, I guess, is, will be default members of the, of the fractal. And the goal is to promote as much fractal governance on our chain as possible. Um, but, uh, and then to do IBC interblockchain communication with other fractal chains. Uh, I made a tweet earlier that one of the superpowers of fractal governance on blockchains is it actually facilitates inter-blockchain communication in a way that no technological objective inter-blockchain communication is able to do so. Um, and we can talk more about that on next week. Time to do the first breakout room. All right, I'm opening up the rooms and I was able to get the settings configured correctly this week. So we'll have a 60 second delay. <clears throat> Mike. Hello, and everyone. Hello. Does anybody else hear a weird sound? Yeah. Uh, Every, uh, let's see, uh, I'll mute. All right, Carlos, I think you've got some feedback. Uh, we just testing the uh, the sound. Can you hear me? Uh, we can, but it's terrible quality. <laughs> just testing is, the sound. Is there any, uh, any other? What about now? Is it better? It's much better now. That's a lot better. You're yeah. a little bit quiet, but, but it's clear. All right. Cool. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'll MC unless someone else wants to take over. I'm happy to do it. I do it most weeks. Uh, June and Carlos, I don't think we've been in a room. It's good to meet you guys. Uh, do you mind me asking uh, where you guys are located in the world? I'm always curious. Uh, uh, I'll also say real quick too before they say that I'm recording this right now. I plan to say it on social media. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Mike. June, are you located in yeah. the world? Hey, good yeah. to meet you. Uh, oh, who? Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm in Puerto Rico right now. And um, yeah, but uh, California most of my life, but I just recently moved about a year ago. Um, cool. And Carlos, where are you located? Yeah, I'm now in the Philippines. Uh, cool. Great to meet you all. I hope wow. uh, we uh, together. I hope you can hear me well. Yep, we can. What what time is it in the Philippines right now? Well, it's a uh, twelve twenty uh, midnight, almost All right. one a.m. at GMT plus eight. And are you uh, are you new to Fractally? Is this your first meeting? Yes, yeah, but I I uh, studied uh, two weeks ago. Um, just missed the last meeting, so I'm kind of prepared. Uh, but I of course would appreciate uh, that you're guiding us with experience. Perfect. 
Yeah, well, welcome. And if you have any questions, uh, definitely ask. I'm going to, I'll moderate. Basically, I'll run a timer. Uh, each of us will speak for three minutes. And then um, I'll manage the chat <coughs> to uh, rank everybody. All right, uh, let's go bottom up this time, just because I've never done that, and I do the same thing every time normally. So, Dan, you're at the bottom. If you'd like to go first, I'll start a timer. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Mike. I'll share a bit of a presentation here about what I've been doing to help fractally and help fractal governance cooperation. So uh, I, I visit the fractally.com off site often and just refer to it, but it's also just a nice opening. And I just read uh, Dan's new article about the refinement of token math and so forth. And I've just been reviewing all these new rule changes. And I'm really excited about this process that we're trying today with the two rooms and all the other uh, changes coming. Um, this week, I've been working quite a bit on uh, updating the EdenCreators.com website. So EdenCreators.com, uh, it used to be uh, kind of messy, but it's more refined. It's about empowering creators and communities with Web3 and helping everyone cooperate fractally to make the best experience possible. And I organize, I feature the Eden Fractal since we helped start that and we're helping support that. I also focused on the Genesis Fractal as well throughout the site. And I made buttons for videos and uh, something called a garden I'll show you briefly and events and an about page. Um, so the about page is kind of like a big artwork that I previously made uh, about Eden Fractal or I'm sorry, about Eden Creators about how we make exciting videos and so forth to help everybody understand the benefits uh, fractally and how we're aiming to create and plant seeds for lots of fractal communities for all sorts of fun and helpful purposes. The videos link goes to the Eden Creators YouTube channel, which I've been organizing and curating with videos from the Eden Fractal and the Eden Town Hall. We talked a lot about the Eden Fractal and Fractal on EOS and the Genesis Fractal videos that I put here. Um, Alien Worlds Fractal and several other videos. I also started to put together like an intro to Eden and Fractally uh, playlist that I'll put together more over time, but basically trying to just curate helpful content for people to learn about it. I put together a garden page, which is partially like writing for notes that I've been writing for a long time, and then partially also showing uh, fractals that I'm aiming to start. I made a kind of a music video about that a, a while ago where you can learn more about some of the fractals that I'm aiming to do and some of the projects that I'm aiming to do to help um, grow fractal governance and so forth. So there's quite a lot here. Uh, these all link to basically kind of like informal blog posts and stuff that will be pushed forward, uh, but lots of things that are all quite related to empowering communities with fractally. I've also put together an events page with uh, events in EOS and um, and Genesis Fractal and Alien Worlds Fractal, all sorts of fractal stuff, then put some pictures together. I included the Genesis Go Fractally uh, logo and then website and links and stuff like that in addition to a bunch of other ones. And I started working on a, a Pomelo pitch for Eden Creators where um, I kind of just summarized what I just showed you but write it out better and more informatively. And I'm going to be putting that up and aiming to raise funding to help grow fractal governance and so forth on EOS and Fractally and Wax. And then I also updated the uh, EdenFractal.com website too. So I put together some nicer buttons for videos and RCP and details. The videos I put together videos. Oh, okay. I'll just go through really quick. I wasn't sure if it was four minutes, but I, I, I updated details page too. And then I hosted the Eden Fractal meeting this week and processed the distributions of Eden Respect and EOS. And I participated in the first uh, Fractal Fiction, which is using the Eden process, but it's very interesting. We basically uh, elected writers to write a book. Um, try a story, and then I helped uh, just like retweet and so forth all the cool stuff coming with Fractally. Sorry that was a bit long, but thank you for listening. It's awesome. Eden, what did you call it? Eden Writers. Um, the, the 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 Fractal Fiction event that uh, Lars and Lovejoy hosted. Lars is a great artist in in EO space, and he hosted an event where basically. Um, like we broke out into breakout rooms and then we picked different elements of the story like characters and plot and setting and stuff like that and then we use the process to elect a writer and uh, a couple editors to make a short story wow that's awesome yeah cool or is the underachiever dan <laughs> 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 all right uh carlos um I, if you do you have any questions about what you want to share here or you're, you're free to say anything um, we're happy to, to kind of get an introduction about you if you want, but
but if you have things that you have contributed that you want to share that'll count toward the ranking, you're welcome to do that as well. I'll have a timer of three minutes and I'll just let you know when the three minutes is up. Right, uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep, no problem. Yeah, well, it, great to be here. Um, I work as a, as a digital asset consultant and a writer and researcher. I joined about a few weeks ago, so I read the material. So I can say now that I, my contributions are, I have retweeted and shared and commented on Fractalist content on my Twitter account. Um, also, I shared and commented on Fractalist content on Hive and Facebook. So that that's the, fir the first question. For the uh, second one, I have invited nearly uh, 400 people to join Fractally and participate. I use the invitation link provided and also I send uh, personal emails and invitation messages in Twitter, but so far only two of them uh, accepted. So I'm, I'm a bronze member now. So that's good. And this is my first time. And I, um, I would like to uh, contribute as much as I can and uh, feel free to contact me and uh, we'll make things happen. Thank you. That's awesome. Cool. Great to hear, 400 people. I think that's the biggest number I've heard yet. Uh, yeah. Let me reset my timer. All right, uh, June, you're next on my screen. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is June. Um, uh, yeah, it just started uh, from following Dan Larimer during the BitShares days and then Steemit, EOS, and and now uh, helping out here with Fractally. And uh, I do have a startup on EOS. It's a wallet on ramp. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Uh, in terms of Fractally contributions, um, uh, I wrote a couple blog posts. I'll, I'll put it in the link here. And um, so uh, you know, I'm writing a, a blog journey into Fractally. So I did uh, kind of uh, the second and third posts uh so uh and then also summarized more equal animals uh the true democracy chapter so just trying to you know simplify uh, more equal animals so i'm on uh, just the second chapter but condensed like six thousand words into about 600 uh and then the other couple blog posts uh, all told about maybe 12 hours i was just i didn't i didn't really time it but 12 to about 15 hours worth of just, I mean, that's how long it takes to block things, uh, at least uh, an estimate. So that's pretty much it, just uh, blogging uh, three posts on Hive. Also upvoted a bunch of stuff on Hive, uh, but that's my contribution, so. Okay, perfect. Boy, no one's using their time. We're gonna have a lot of, uh, a lot of good time at the end of this. Uh, hmm. Thomas, you're next. Uh, thanks, Mike. I am on the Fractally team. And uh, the last, every week I've been inviting somebody new. Um, I have, I had a newcomer came in last week and somebody who's signing up to join. He'll be here next uh, Saturday. And um, I think he's a really good community leader. I'm kind of excited about that. And he has a lot of marketing experience uh, and he's doing a lot of stuff in uh, blockchain and crypto. Um, of course, reading it up up uh, voting all of Dan's work on uh, Hive and Twitter and everything and trying to get the word out as well as uh, my focus is on the UX for uh, for uh, refractally and there's the last few weeks getting things ready for what we can release when Dan is ready to release things uh, in the coming weeks so um, kind of scrambling and uh, working with Mike and the rest of the team to uh, to get that core set of things figured out as well as um, how that relates to the future uh, of the applications that we'll be releasing and and tied into the blockchain. So a lot of a lot of research and, and going back and forth the past week, kind of somewhat pulling my hair out and also uh, uh, just grokking uh, Dan's thoughts and uh, Mike has had a tremendous amount of input and um, 
and uh, and trashing everything and rebuilding it again uh, several times. So at least conceptual some some of the concepts. Um, so yeah, it's been a pretty busy, hectic and interesting uh, past couple of weeks. I expect that to continue uh, for the foreseeable future in the coming weeks. All fun, of course. Um, I think that's that's really about it. I can see the rest of my time. All right. Well, I'll I'll let you cede it to me then, because I'm going to speak on your behalf. Uh, I've worked with Thomas uh, quite a bit this week, um, mm -hmm. and uh, what we're working on is uh, it, it's hard to explain, and it's one of the one of the uh, exciting surprise things that we'll have for you. But uh, it's a feature that Dan's super excited about. It's a very very cool innovation. It's such an innovation that it's been hard for every one of us to wrap our brains around what Dan's even talking about. So it's been this iterative process of listen to Dan, take notes, go design something is what we the mode we've been in. So Thomas has done a great job understanding the core ideas and then mapping out the designs, putting them back in front of Dan and having go, Dan say, no, 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 that's not at all what I was talking about. And, you know, iterating uh, so that we can we can bring our brains together on the design. And uh, Thomas has done some awesome work in in wrapping his brain around the ideas, let alone doing the designs. And uh, I think you guys would be blown away by some of that work when we we get it over the finish line. So that was that was great, very stressful work this week for sure. All right, cool. Um, I'll restart the button for me. Uh, aside from all of that, um, I. I did the the understanding and and um, what would you call the uh, reduction from meetings with Dan of what is this feature really, uh, how is it going to work, what are the critical requirements, how is it different than what's out there now, so that I could walk uh, Thomas through it and other other members of the team who who needed to be caught up on it. Uh, did a lot of work just getting the architecture and ideas behind that. Uh, the other thing that has been the bulk of my week has been the math of this new model. The blog post that Dan put out that uh, Dan Singjoy here uh, mentioned that was put out in, in the last 24 hours. That was that was a lot of my work. I basically wrote up the I wrote up a pre blog post that I provided to Dan. Um, so that blog post is a whole whole lot of the content I put together, and that's based on. The math itself for the token issuance, um, and we did that in a, a really cool, um, pure mathematical sense. Uh, it's all continuous, right? For in a mathematical calculus sense, it's uh, continuous functions. One really cool feature that allows us to 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 make happen is rather than each week we inflate a certain amount. This this is in the blog post. I just assume that very few people have had a chance to read it yet. At any point in time, any microsecond during the week, we'll be able to say, let's emit some of the inflation, exactly the amount that should be up to this point. And then we can do any moment after that. And what that allows us to do is, uh, with the eventual white paper design, with social posts and other things that happen throughout the week, will be able to emit small amounts of inflation that all perfectly add up to that token supply so that we can be filling buckets and compensating people for stuff that happens between the weekly meetings in a precise mathematically knowable way. So I started by getting that sorted out. I worked with Steven. Steven was like the lifesaver at the end of that when I was tearing my what's left of my hair out. Um, he helped me get over the finish line there, and then we wrote up the blog post, and I worked with Dan to uh, get that ironed out. And the hopefully everyone appreciates the pretty integral equations that are in that paper. <laughs> that was what Dan and I were doing at uh, five o'clock last night. <laughs> so that's been the most of our work. We wanted to make sure that was tight, mathematically accurate, and consistent, and that took a whole lot. Uh, not only to get the math of the token issuance right, but then to come back to the tally sheet with Gregory and clarify the how this is going to roll out and how it applies pro rata for the weekend, the weeks that we've already um, completed. So almost all of that is done, and I'll be working with Gregory over the next couple of days to 
update the tally sheet effectively. And that's my five minutes. Uh, anybody have any major questions before we start to rank? Anything critical to ranking? Has June gone? Did... Yep. Everybody's okay. gone. Sorry. My my brain uh, it's not yeah, working. I think... so mine... Yeah, I think this is great. I think, uh, you know, everyone's made good contributions. You know, I think the team members always, I mean, you're working every day on on these things. So I think, you know, it seems as though you guys should kind of get the, the most respect uh, just being part of the team. And then I figure yeah. if we just have to get the top three, then there's uh, probably what one slot left. Is that correct? And, and then as so outside of that, you know, um, I mean, it seems like Dan has, has done a lot. I, I don't know how much of it is in the last week versus kind of, but it seemed like a lot. So, and then even Carlos has done a lot, but, um, but anyway, so that's, that's what I'm uh, thinking what the process is just to get the top three. Right. Uh, and then, and then, and then rank the, the other two is, is the last task. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's, let's, let's do it in the chat. I'm going to do it the same way we always do. And I just think it'll, it'll move fast. So I'll put rank six like this. Um, we can put our votes for who should be ranked six, and we should be able to sort that out pretty okay. quick. Um, so, if you don't mind, Mike, there's uh, three things I'd like to ask quickly. So first off, do we need to do sure. rank six individually and rank five individually, or should we just um, uh, just do it like the top three? You know what I mean? We we could attempt the top three as a chunk. Um, if uh, if what June said kind of resonates with people, <clears throat> do we want to rate the top three all at once? I don't know. I feel like that might be more difficult, um, and it's probably easier to do rank six. But I'm not sure if we need to do that. So I don't know. We I'm we don't need to specify. We don't need to specify other ranks, but uh, I don't know which will be faster. So let's try top three. So yeah. every, everybody put the top three votes in the chat. I'll put a header. Okay. And. And I'll just say three, two, one, and you can drop them in the chat. Um, the, three. Oh, I, I was going to ask to for now in Russia. I, I was wondering how Carlos you invited four hundred people. Did you like send out emails or uh, or, or speaking people in person? Okay, sorry. Could you repeat, please? Oh yeah, sure. I was wondering how you invited the four hundred people. Uh, I, was, I was wondering was that like sending out a, a bunch of emails or speaking to people in person or uh, or, or, or exactly how that went? Have you heard back from the people? Other than the two people who joined. Yes, I did send the, the uh, personal invitation by emails uh, using the link from Fractally. I uh, was about 100 only there, and the other like 200 by Twitter. I sent a message in Twitter, and the other 100 I made by uh, talking to people and emails. So, yeah, that was like every day I would do a little bit. Uh, of course, I cannot. I didn't do one day everything. Is that is that clear? Yes, then, that that's clear. And uh, thank you. By the way, it, it's very nice to meet you both, Carlos and Jim. Yeah, yeah. Discovered that the, you know people are afraid. You know the Solana, all this uh, situation with the phishing, uh, these spoofing things. So I was not that successful. I need to have another strategy there. So they don't click. They don't. Uh, even if they know they um then i had to talk to them i talked to some of them again and that's how it went okay cool sounds good thank you very much carlos for explaining and then both inviting all those people uh it's a pleasure to meet you and yeah carlos and june uh it's great to meet you both you guys are both doing awesome work so uh this is difficult i don't know what to choose but th that's a good uh problem to have i guess so cool thank you very much all right, so top three. Everybody ready with your top three? Three, two, one. All right. Looks straightforward. All right. Uh, Junior, the one exception to the uh, vote. So uh, we do have consensus. Uh, Dan, are you willing to align with the consensus where we put you in the top three? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm willing to align with the consensus. Thank you. All right, perfect. So now that leaves six, five, four, three. So rank 
three. Let me look at my own list, make sure I'm ready with this. All right, uh, rank three, let's do a vote in three, two, one. So uh, rank three is um, the last two, so it's me and Carlos, right? Is that? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so... um, okay. Um, let me see. Um, all right, I'm not going to vote. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's waiting on this one. Okay. Um, so anybody have any questions or proposals even for how to how to rate uh, Carlos versus June? Yes, uh, I think you know we we kind of both did uh, is a, a kind of a, a good amount, and it's just uh, the, the, it's a different kind of thing, right? So I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so I. I kind of blog, you know, 12, 15 hours, but, you know, Carlos has been doing hours a day, kind of inviting people and it's Twitter and social media, which is important. So I, I don't know. So I, I guess those, those are the, the two, two um, types of contributions, which are a little bit right, kind of different. I, think I, guess. The, I, I read, well, I, I read your, uh, your blogs and Mary Bear Carp, uh, June, and I think you comment a little bit so you did wonderful work there. So that's why I, I put you there above me. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone did a wonderful job in this secret room. That's very good. Yeah, no, I, no thanks Carlos for yeah, doing all the, the inviting too. I think just being active and being consistent kind of, you know, uh, as many days as possible is important as well. So just anyways, so. But yeah, it's a tough one. It's like it's hard to sometimes to to, to <laughs> decide. So one of the one of the differentiators, uh, and I, I I wouldn't even base my vote on this, but it it is one of the things that I I find interesting in this case. Now that I know you're in Puerto Rico, June, you're in a community that has crypto people in it. Uh, since you've been following Dan as long as you have, uh, your at least aware of the projects, if not already connected to the people in them, those communities. Um, so I would take that into my own account as well. Uh, Dan or Thomas, any any ideas on, on how to uh, do this final ordering? Um, I'll throw my two cents in. I, I appreciate what people uh, grok, distill, um, what's going on with Fractally and share that with people uh, in a blog. I think that there's there's something to be said about that. I mean, Mike spends a tremendous amount of time distilling um, all that's there and sharing that out and, and bringing uh, clarity. Um, especially now, it's a big help. It really is a big help. So I just want to acknowledge you for that, Jim. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really value both of your contributions greatly. I think it's awesome. Um, and um, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I'm very much looking forward to working more with both of you in the future and uh, uh, having you guys be at like the uh, top of future ranks. I think that what you're doing is super valuable, but um, uh, obviously I think everybody's doing great work in, in this group too, of course, Thomas and Mike too. Uh, I put um, June in my vote uh, previously. And, and by the way, June, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Is it June? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, because I was also really impressed with the blog post too. I, I mean, I saw you read or saw you published one of them and I, I read a little bit of it previously, but I didn't realize that you published all three of these over the past week. Um, and uh, just skimming them now, it seems like they're really thoughtful and uh, super helpful. So I really appreciate that a lot. It was also like a quick choice for me because I had to make a decision and I wasn't sure. But Carlos is also inviting 400 people is amazing. Um, I suppose the blog posts are a little bit more like visible for me right now, uh, which uh, maybe was part of my decision there. And so that's why I was kind of leaning towards June. But uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to go either way too because I think you guys are both doing really super helpful work. All right. Um, anybody else have a vote ready to drop in the in the chat? 
Let's just do rank three and two at the same time. So three, three comma two. Okay. You ready? Yep. Go ahead. I already have the header up there. All right. That looks like we've got all but June being being June being modest. <laughs> Do you, yeah. will you, uh, will you swap your order to align with us? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll accept it for sure. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Perfect. I just, you know, it's uh, just trying to be more objective, not voting for like myself either. So I guess, I don't know. It's sometimes uh, just, uh, just to keep it a little bit more neutral, I guess. But, but no, Carlos, it's, 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 Carlos did a lot. So yeah, it's hard. So. Yeah, this is this is a hard one, and I'm glad we got to discuss it so much. This is super useful. I, I often am in rooms where we don't have as much time to discuss the details like this. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna reformat uh, what you put here, Carlos, a little bit for clarity. The we we have not been appending uh, things to the names, so I'll do it like this. Oops. I have no idea how. Oh, actually, I should. I wish I got to look at this, but I have no idea how we're reporting this on Hive yet. Anybody know what the final Hive report should look like after the I second think, round? So Dan mentioned that the the top three should be in alphabetical order, and then the the last two should be ranked by um, by the ranking because the top three will just automatically. You know, there's no ranking for the top three, I guess. Is, is All right. So that would be Dan by by username. So that would be Dan, mm -hmm. me, Thomas, like this. Oh, and sorry, I shouldn't have any of these labels to publish on Hive. So let me get rid of those. All right. So this is what we would publish. Yeah, looks good. Okay. I say, given we have so little time to vote after this meeting, we just go vote now. Are we aligned with that? No. Sure. Sounds good. And anybody have so the link you want to drop in, drop in here of where has we're voting? To make the, the entry at that height or only one from this group? Each uh, person. Is it above that? Okay, so we do this one. All right. And uh, but we which link now do we do the entry? Uh, oh, it's in all right. Thank you. So we need to get some hive. <laughs> we need to buy some hive for. The... Are you? Uh, you should. You should be able to post. If you have any trouble posting, we can. We can delegate yeah, to help you out with that. that was kind of, yeah. All right. All right. That's great. I was going to ask quick, Dan. You also um, continue with the Eden with the Eden fractal or, or you're going to focus on the on fractally as, as the comment from from uh, Daniel uh, today, that Larry Bear. Yeah. Um, because point, but, but now it makes sense to focus only on one. I joined the EOS last yesterday. What, what is your, what shall we do there? Only fractally? Cool. Well, yeah, thanks for joining and thanks to the question, Carlos. So uh, I, I'm, I'm planning to keep doing the Eden Fractal. We've had about 20 members or so, and so I think it's really helpful to have that going on EOS because there's a lot of people in the EOS community who um, this provides an opportunity to show them and help them understand how fractal governance can help with EOS. And it's also a good opportunity to uh, help promote this Genesis Fractal event too through doing that because I found that some of the EOS community members either don't have the time or they don't see as much of a connection between this and EOS. Uh, so I think that the Eden Fractal is very helpful to um, both serve as another experiment for fractal governance and bring people together and try it in a different way. Uh, and then also um, I think it can be like kind of like a gateway for a lot of the people in the in the EOS community to both join this event. I'm certainly promoting and encouraging people at the Eden Fractal to join this event uh, and then also just uh, 
show how the process can be so helpful in another environment as well. That's my plan, at least. That, and, uh, and it was the first time I heard Dan say that before, so I'll think about it more. And I'd be interested if anybody has any input about that. But I think at this point, we've been doing the Eden Fractal for like nine weeks now, and and it's been going well. So I, I, I think it's in everybody's best interest to keep it going. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I think we should do the entry at, at Hive, right? Yeah. Let, yep. Let's everybody vote on on the post. Or me, you know, put the put the round one uh, reply up. I'm... So we just oil well, I already made. Uh, this is what we need to type like this, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think they yep. said they were gonna uh, make it so that you only have five minutes until the end of the meeting yeah. to, to I post. I think we so. all we all should do it now, otherwise mm -hmm. we get zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, like, yep, so I, it looks like everybody's voted. I'm just waiting for Dan. Let me know. Oh, there you are. All right, everybody's voted right, now. Right. So Eden, Eden actually is also the first uh, DAO using fractal governance for a blockchain itself, and fractally would be the uh, second another DAO using fractal governance, but it's more different mission, like than uh, EOS, Eden, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, although I would say, uh, probably according to Dan's uh, uh, definition of DAO, at, at first Eden on, on EOS wasn't probably technically a DAO. It's more of a smart organization, and so the this oh. fractal uh, and this Genesis fractal was a DAO before Eden was a fractal, or, or was a DAO before Eden was a DAO, and then Eden became a DAO when we started the Eden fractal. I would say as well. I mean, that might be kind of semantics, um, but. I, 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 I suppose that's probably right. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes. You're right. Yeah. Genesis Fractal is the, uh, the, the right one. I'm curious, since I since we have you in the room, Dan, uh, and we have a, actually have time to get updates on this stuff, um, what is what would you say the relationship <laughs> is becoming? Right. What is it as of, as of late? What's the relationship between Eden and the Eden Fractal? Um, good question. Uh, well, there's a lot of people in Eden who are excited about the Eden Fractal, um, and who are very excited about the Eden Fractal. And then there's also quite a few people in Eden who are just kind of like watching from the sides or so, I think. Um, there's 18 people who joined last time. We've had somewhere around that amount of people joining every week for, I, I don't know, the past several weeks now. And, um, uh, I, I, I think and that. The, oh, I'm sorry. What's that? What's the mission of Eden Fractal? Do you guys have that well defined yet? Uh, it's not like maybe super well defined or super well agreed upon. So I just updated on the website and the Twitter account to be helping Eden and EOS to empower communities. That's just me who's running that, and we're about to um, we're about to implement a, a kind of interim consensus process like we've done here, where we can uh, kind of have a formal <coughs> governance process for the group. So until we have that set up, then I suppose that we don't really have a tool set to define as a group what the mission is. But I think generally people are in agreement with that. I think that makes sense as a, as a mission. Um, I, I, oh. and, and you have a EOS token called Respect or something like Respect, right? Yeah, it's called Eden. Eden. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know. It, it's interesting um, deciding between a team under the Genesis fractal versus a separate fractal. You know, I wrote a post about this, and then Dan today mentioned that it was better to stay within the Genesis fractal. And I was actually thinking that it's at least for the the, the fractal I was trying to create to to be kind of outside because you know it's a different mission, right? And so it's kind of interesting because, you know, Eden Fractal is still a team. And then I realized the BitShares Fractal was, is eventually going to be independent, but it's also starting as a team. So anyways, just that decision. Uh, I do understand, you know, when you're small, you kind of want to, you know, concentrate the efforts. And I think that's what Dan was getting at. But then I'm still thinking that, at least for the other project, that, you know, we could branch off like a number of people in that Fractal to participate in. The Genesis Fractal, while like maybe the mission for like this other kind of nonprofit project um, 
is our public goods project is is worked on by people with kind of uh, that mission, right? So I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I, I'd love to, to jump in on that because I, I think um, I think there's different use cases, right? I think Dan's main focus in saying what he said is that that there is there is power in numbers. And so while this is such a tiny thing, we're so early in this this process, we're still working out the process, right? We're still figuring out mindsets for participation and relating to each other and how do we work out ranking and like that's still being ironed out. So I think there's a lot of value in getting as many people here as the genesis of it, as the as the starter of like where does the innovation and the resolution and the agreement come from that will then benefit a lot of other people. So I, I see the, the leverage there. And I can also see from the little bit you said, you may have a community with some completely distinct um, mission statement who just doesn't, they're not here for this. They're, they don't care about the process itself. Um, they just want to use the process. They just want to, they're up to some other mission that they really care deeply about. And it's not this particular thing. So I could see reasons both ways, um, but it'd be it would be cool if you had, you know, a tiny portion. Put four would make a team, so four out of the entire rest of the fractal. Um, that would be cool to cross pollinate and share experiences in the different fractals and challenges. I think there'd be a lot of value in that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, Dan, and I, I think yeah. You should make the entry now, Dan. Did you make the entry? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. You, you might have to refresh to see it, Carlos. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it yet. Okay, I will check. Yeah, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yep, you're welcome. Of course. Sorry. Uh, uh, June, you were saying something? And I was also wondering what is the fractal that you're thinking of building as well, too, June? Yeah, that's it's a, a universal dividend or gift dividend project. Um, it's somewhat like a UBI, but not quite, um, you know, uh, I mean, I think people will consider it a UBI project, but essentially giving a small uh, amount of value to everybody for life, uh, essentially. And that's the only way you get the tokens, you know, it's just everyone gets uh, the inflation of this token and, and, and that's it. So it's, uh, and it also can serve as an identity chain. It's similar to Fractally in some ways, except the distribution is just like, just automatic so that, you know, they don't have to do anything except claim it. They don't have to participate or anything or do any kind of work other than just claiming. So it's it's uh, it's one of, you know, uh, I think WorldCoin is another example. I think, uh, what else is there? Um, Circles, I think. There's a few of those that are, are doing this kind of um, mass distribution uh, type of uh, project. So, but this is just a variation of that. Um, it, is that, the idea uh, to have regular meetings of people who like manage the DAO and then have a whole different set of people who are just claiming? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think Crackerly is perfect because, you know, we need support for the volunteer effort kind of to, to, to do this and get, you know, even the rewards for, for that. But then it's a separate, uh, you know, the, the other tokens just entirely separate. And, you know, it's clean that way so that people are not like, you know, people aren't perceiving that this group is getting anything extra. It's like everyone is equal in that realm of, of the distribution. And, but we do need to support it either with grant funding or practically respect tokens. And, and so I think it's a good, uh, it's a good compliment. We, we're looking for uh, and it's a proof of concept right now, so I'm I'm recruiting more people into it. So it's it's still in the early stages as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, an interesting idea is if you tie to the Genesis fractal, you have this this like you said cross pollination. You also have this leverage of um, if if we are you know the first on chain and the first chain to have this kind of governance and let's say that's effective let's say it works kind of reasonably well um and the token ends up having value then you're then you're seeding your community with something that is likely to have value for a completely unrelated reason and by giving that token out to the people involved in in your community that's also a um 
what you call that, like advertising of sorts, right? It's sharing the idea that, you know, where did, where did this, this respect token come from? Oh, look over there. There's this thing. It's, it's a way to educate a lot of people by just including them in a, a system. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree. I think, I did, I think that's, that makes sense. But, you know, it, it's almost like though there's uh, different respect tokens and, and you know, and I, I just read about this, right? That each fractal has their respect tokens and there's this, this liquidity provision between the respect tokens. So it's, it's also within the s scope of it kind of oh, working yeah. together with community. So whether it's like directly under uh, or kind of, uh, kind of, you know, uh, interdependent fractals, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. So, so yeah, it's, it, it'll be a decision. I mean, I'll be participating and a number of people will be participating regardless, whether it's a team. Um, I was thinking of doing a separate team to help fractally separately, just like, you know, business development or whatever, like that I think I can help with. And oh, so, cool. so that's what I was thinking. Okay. If I'm going to only be in one team, then I think it, the focus of helping fractally separately might be actually better, like personally. And then, uh, so anyway, so that's another decision point as well. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, Carlos just asked you, do you have a website? Uh, yeah, for the UG, it's ugdp.org. And um, yeah, so ugdp.org. Cool. Yeah, and if you guys can sign the petition or if you're interested in participating, it's proof of concept. It just has a informational website, pretty uh, pretty simple right now, and uh, and there's just a petition for. I'm just you know trying to get enough uh, supporters or sign signatories, I guess. So, so are you um, so you're meeting regularly, or you're planning to build it? Or yeah, not? yeah, plan to build it up. Use the fractally process, everything. So. Uh, anybody who's interested in that, yeah, definitely uh, be appreciate it. Uh, just reach out to me. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, Thanks yeah, for sharing. Yeah. Three seconds. Dan, Dan, also, you have the main. If you could please share, you have the many websites, huh, Dan? Oh yeah. Uh, I'll share. Main like a, like. A, oh. <laughs> What's that? Thank you, guys. D D thank yeah, thank you. Th thank you very much you for the great meeting. Yeah, great conversation, side. guys. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> uh, I, uh, I'll share the websites now, uh, Carlos, and, and then uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about uh, the project that you're doing too, June. So thank you very much for sharing that. Thanks, guys. Also, and Mike, uh, encouraged to share their websites, or or you can check their profiles as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, keep up the good work. Of no, twenty seconds. <laughs> Carlos, remind me how how do you say thank you in Tagalog? Oh, salamat. Salamat. That's right. Salamat. I yeah, never I'm remember that. I, uh, salamat. Just came here to go. Salamat. Yeah. I've looked that up so many times and I always forget. Yeah. <clears throat> Recording in progress. All right. Uh, show of hands, how many people completed that with a lot of time left over? Well, Anyone come down to the wire? All right, so it looks like at least one group came down to the wire. All right. Uh, very interesting. We'll have to do this a few more weeks just to see whether or not it makes sense to shorten the first meeting to um, 30 minutes from 45. Matt. I'd like to acknowledge Josh. He had a brilliant suggestion for my room. Uh, basically, after everyone uh, went through their contributions, he just said, if you'd like to move on to round two, raise your hand. And three people raised their hand and three people didn't. And it was an easy, easy partition. And then we just had to focus on sorting the last uh, three, you know, the four or three. Nice. What, what was the method that you used to um, do sortition in your round one? 
No. Josh just had us raise our hands. Just raise your hand. If, if you want to move on to round two, raise your hand and only three raise their hands. And so done, right? It's done yep. in one second. And then you ranked the remaining members? Yep. Then we fo focused all our time on sorting three people, three contributions, and that went relatively quickly. Was there any, can the, the group consider the fact that maybe some of the people who wanted to move on to round uh, two maybe didn't deserve to move on to round two? Or is it just obvious that uh, they should all be moving on? We didn't discuss it. It was obvious to me. Like it was in my mind, it was obvious. And so that's, I would think, why it was such an easy, I didn't even think about it, Dan. That's a good point. Um, but it was like an easy, easy decision in my mind. Yeah, we did a three, two, one submit and everyone agreed exactly uh, on who the top three were. So, uh, and we just had to focus on the bottom. So it was a very almost unanimous agreement on who the top three were. Did any groups have trouble deciding between position three and four? I did. Um, I was I was ranked in in, in, the, in the, the going to second round uh, group, but there was this member in my in my group that I somehow wanted to to go to the second round because he's he has this very different profile. He's not a uh, technical guy. He has a. He's part of a pizza producers in community in Georgia. So I I I somehow wanted him to go to the second round, but uh, I still wanted to come myself. So there was this moment of doubt at the end of the of the moment he dumped me into dumped me into the second round. Okay. Anyone else have significant debate over uh, positions three and four? Um, wow. my, my group came to consensus quite easily, but I will say I personally, in my own mind, had trouble coming to a, a decision between three and four, but it's not really related to consensus. Okay. Did you advocate for, for your alternative view with your group or uh, was it just there's consensus and therefore discussion? There was, there, there was consensus with the group, just uh, I guess prior to that, not in my own mind, <laughs> and, but uh, that's a personal problem. You know. So you relied on the group consensus to inform your personal opinion? Definitely helped, yeah. Okay. Um, sounds good. Well, it'd be very interesting to see how this next round goes uh, and see who you all promoted. I think one of the things we're learning is that our rank value system is creator distributed. Uh, and so the top three positions were much easier to reach consensus on than the, um, you know, to divide the group into half. Um, so that's a good sign. Uh, any, anyone else have any um, negative experience with the first round? Uh, I wouldn't say negative experience, but uh, we we were under the impression we had 25 minutes uh, to get everything done. So we were like we were moving and it, it just that felt like I don't think that that would have been tough to hit 25 minutes. Um, so, yeah, that was just kind of our experience. But then we found out we had an additional 20 minutes. So then we were good. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for the confusion in in the pre meeting then. Um, I did put the timer on. I don't know if you guys saw the remaining time in the top corner of your Zoom screens in your breakout rooms. It was very helpful. Okay. Yeah, that was our bad. We just, we misinterpreted it. So, but Val, he he showed us the, uh, Val was in our group. He he sent the link and it, it worked out. So. Okay, real quick. Uh, I'm I'm removing people from the meeting right now based on your your usernames. And if you're not supposed to be moving on to round two, if you're not moving on to round two, you need to leave the meeting. Uh, I've a couple times I've posted the voice chat in the Discord, or you can just go over into Discord and find the Hangout room. There's a few people in there right now, but um, we only want people in here that are going to get randomized into uh, the next breakout room. So it should be 24 people. So it looks like I need to kick another eight people out of here. It's easier if you just leave the meeting, um, yeah. but um, 
Mono if, just that's like a PSA announcement. If you accidentally kicked out and you're supposed to be in the meeting, join the Discord group um, or I guess Telegram Joshua um, directly. Yeah, you can you can rejoin. I haven't locked the meeting. I decided that just uh, enabling the waiting room can can work. So okay. uh, just try to rejoin if you accidentally get kicked out or fall off or something. All right. Uh, so, okay, I only see twenty four people in here. So it looks like looks like uh, the work might be done. But I'm just gonna verify. So the next thing is when you do get into your breakout room, we'll go in in about um, six or seven minutes. Um, when you do get in there, just verify that the people in there are supposed to be in there. You can you can use the Hive blog post and um, use like controller command uh, F and do a search and um, just do a double check before you, you begin that the people are supposed to be in there. Uh, that would just be helpful. Um, it, based on the number of people that we have in here, things are probably correct. I'm gonna do some double checking right now and make sure nobody's here that's not supposed to be. Um, but um, if you can help with the due diligence, we would appreciate it. Yeah. The nice thing about uh, subjective governance is anyone who's harassing the community or attempting to deceive would be noted and brought up in subsequent meetings. So everyone is very cooperative. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that property is maintained as it scales. Uh, we are a relatively small community at this stage, but uh, I believe when there's accountability, people tend to just behave better by default. All right, Jorge, do you have any questions? Yes, uh, regarding the possibility of creating a, another fractal, uh, being restricted by the number of uh, teammates we have from this future fractal here in the Genesis fractal. I wanted to say that uh, while I've been trying to create a Spanish-speaking fractal, I've invited several people, that, but that people will never come here because they don't speak English. So there is a bottleneck there. But I still, I, I, I'm intending to create it. So I wanted you guys to let you know that. Yeah, we've got the same thing going with the French fractal, that, uh, yeah. our French speaking translation. So I think if there's a different language, that's a good reason to have another fractal altogether. Um, or if there's a completely different time zone, say Australia, I know there's some people on our team that are, would like to join, but can't because it's literally middle of the night. Um, so, Mike. Quick observation from round one. Uh, we agreed very quickly at the top three and we had so much more time to get into how to rank uh, level two and three. We got to talk about our own observations. We got to ask questions and I felt like we, we got way better resolution on the ranking for those last two. So that was a very, very cool experience out of this round. Dan Singjoy. Thanks, Dan. And yeah, thanks, Mike. I completely agree. And that was a really fun round. Um, the comment I was going to make was, uh, I guess, partially directed towards Josh in terms of doing this uh, second round. I'm wondering if you think maybe it might be a better idea in the future rather than making it so that people need to leave. Maybe we can. Uh, just use like a randomizer for the names that's outside of the Zoom breakout room functionality. And perhaps like we can put it on the video to see who will be in each room. Uh, and then you can just manually assign the breakout room so that uh, people don't have to leave and people can, you know, stick around and still talk and, uh, and be able to listen and so forth if they didn't make it to the second round. It's a good idea. Alternatively, just have a second Zoom link that everyone can join um and have the people that advance leave <laughs> um uh, that way everyone else can just hang out and talk if they want um because yeah. yeah yeah i i was just gonna say i think my opinion would be that is probably better uh that the people who move on have to take a, an action to move on to the second round and then people other people can just stay and it doesn't feel like you're getting kicked off of <laughs> anything um yeah uh, i had some feedback uh two points one uh, i think we shouldn't really consider shortening the first round until 
I think until we have the the UI, uh, Brandon's uh, the the UI that we've had that demo for, it, because I think that possibly even more than this change is going to accelerate um, the conversation. Uh, so I'm really excited for that UI. Um, the other thing is that uh, just to comment on what Mike Manfredi just said about having more time to talk about the um, the levels one, two, and three is um, I think that's really cool. And like a side effect there is that we, the, the maybe the newer people to the community get some extra time to have uh, input from community leaders about what types of things are valuable and have some better alignment to what the community vision is. Um, it's just a, a nice side effect that I thought of, wanted to share. That's it. Thanks. Yeah, in our particular group, there's a lot of time spent talking about what the top three contributors were doing as well. Um, but yeah, we had like 18 to 20 minutes left over. Uh, uh, so um, it, I guess it really depends on the group, uh, how long it's going to take. I'm very fascinated to see how this next round goes starting in one minute, uh, because everyone who's left on this call is a major contributor and it's going to be uh, a lot more challenging. So I guess we've got four groups of six uh, coming up. So um, if you guys are ready to do the breakout, I see no reason why we can't do the breakout early uh, as soon as Josh. Uh, uh, we're, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the rooms. You should just be automatically thrown in there and uh, the timer will start. After 45 minutes, uh, the rooms will close. There'll be a 60 second delay. You should be able to easily uh, leave the uh, breakout room and come back to the main room with no issues. And we'll see you guys soon. Have fun. Hey everyone, good oh. to see you. I think you muted Gregory. Hello guys. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. J just to let you all know, I'm recording and we'll plan to share this on social media at some point. And it's nice to see you all. Very good. Thank you, Dan. Anyone have any questions? Are we ready to uh, share our contributions on uh, round two? Stan, you were muted. Yeah, go ahead and start. I think that's good. Okay, who would like to uh, begin? Anyone? I'd be happy to. I have, I have no problem with that. All right, yeah. go ahead, Perry. Okay, dnews.zone is, is the way I am contributing. Uh, dnews.zone is, a, is a, an effort to address uh, a number of things. Uh, one of them is the, the manipulation that we receive by the platforms, the media platforms, that manipulate our feeds and make it difficult for a decentralized community to see a singular flow of media. We're all, we all, even if we all uh, subscribe to the same accounts, we we all see a different flow of information. So what D News is is a is a stream of all the media posts, the articles, the podcast. Uh, the videos from various platforms, not just YouTube, but, but uh, other platforms, Odyssey, and various other platforms in a single feed that offers a full text search, effectively what is a full text search across all those platforms and all those media, saving the user uh, amount of time, saving their time uh, to keep up with a decentralized community. So it's a perfect companion, uh, companion that I'm building for, for that purpose. The other goal, the other long-term goal is, and well, I don't, I don't know, long-term, it could happen uh, in a number of uh, weeks or months, uh, is to attach a fractal to the management of this, of this uh, what is essentially a media organization. DNews is a media, is a, is, is a media tool, a media organization, so that the editorial decisions of that media organization are determined by the, the delegates or the 
be determined somehow by some form of a fractal. Uh, uh, so that, and so that I'm simplifying, I'm keeping DNews partic particularly simple so that it's simply a white list and a black list of incoming streams and then also a list of community events like this one we're participating right now and the ones many that, that Dan hosts uh, and others host and uh, in the community. So the combination of these these community events and the incoming po media posts that are inherently decentralized in an in, in a centralized form that is full text searchable is my contribution. All right, thank you, Perry. <laughs> uh, who would you like to hand the baton off to? Uh, you're in my left corner, so I'll go. I'll go with you, Greg. All right, thank you, thank you all. So my name is Gregory Wexler. I'm a full-time fractally engineer. Last week I ranked five. So here are the contributions that, that I've made, um, as well as the contributions of my team. As you know, uh, addendum one of the uh, white paper introduced a number of uh, formulas and calculations that need to be applied to our tally sheet. And as co-manager of the tally sheet with Joshua, I went through uh, the entire sheet and incorporated the inflation calculations. Um, note that inflation is used for the weekly team participation that, that we do here uh, for teams, for staking, social media contributions, and liquidity rewards. Um, I've also updated the sheet with uh, weekly token distribution. So you'll see a supply curve and an emission curve that's used in order to ensure that we get a pro rata uh, respect tabulation. So in essence, the respect that's earned um, is part of this uh, inflation with the first week where a million tokens are issued and then uh, less each week, uh, but uh, evenly um, uh, divided amongst all of us based on the amount of respect that we earn. So when you do get your tally sheets in the next uh, couple of days, again, there's still a lot of moving pieces here uh, in terms of uh, calculations, the numbers will be quite different and I'll provide an explanation for that. Um, also, we've applied a uh, mathematical model that averages your uh, respect earn over the last six week period. So we take the last six weeks, we divide it by six, Formula is a little more involved than, than that because we do want to uh, use a uh, Fibonacci sequence. And when you're trying to apply Fibonacci's, which is integer, and you want to be uh, using uh, decimal numbers, we have to use a, a Benoit formula for that. Um, but in essence, we've got pretty close to it now. And uh, I think you'll be happy with the results. Um, you can actually miss a meeting and still gain respect. Um, through this averaging, which is really nice. Um, I think uh, James Mart likened it to sick time. Other things that I've done, um, I've been working on some of uh, additional exposure for Fractally, as uh, Eric noted, uh, coordinated uh, the effort between uh, Dan and Eric to uh, manage through that podcast. Uh, it's called Building a Metaverse uh, Podcast, where Dan was talking about the legal status of a DAO. That should be out in a couple of weeks. Um, also working with Caleb Woodcock in the United Kingdom, uh, who hosts the Web3 podcast. Um, and uh, I'd like to get uh, Daniel on that as well, and I'm developing other opportunities. Uh, I've talked about uh, data modeling and data governance, and uh, I review items such as how the data would be accessed, how it would be leveraged. You know, there's a good and evil aspect to that. So we have to really make some decisions here as to what data would be publicly available and, and what wouldn't when put on a blockchain. Uh, I've spoken with two legal firms with regards to the legal structure of a DAO, um, where uh, I've identified a structure called UNA, which is uh, unincorporated nonprofit association. And so with those two legal teams, I've been speaking with secret senior counsels in order to ensure that we get to a Genesis Fractal template agreement that we can all leverage and future fractals could be uh, leveraging as well to reduce, significantly reduce the any liability uh, that might be incurred. Um, as you know, I co-host this uh, weekly GoFractal meeting with Joshua. Um, uh, the 
Uh, I've also participated in the research and uh, development of fractal governance, um, and I've posted uh, three blog posts um, in the last few months as well. Thank you. Those are my contributions. The contributions of my team, I think you're all well aware of, the fractal governance model, uh, the um, addendum one update and the mathematical model that Dan recently posted about 19 hours ago, uh, and our update on the continuous Fibonacci function. Thank you. I'm going to pass the baton over to Stan. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Stan Larimer. I'm uh, Dan Larimer's father. That's roughly equivalent to Pepin the Short, King of France, compared to Charlemagne, his son, who is a Holy Roman Emperor. So, you know, I'm not anywhere near what Dan is, but he did bring me out of retirement back in 2013 to help him develop his first project, BitShares. And I've been kicking around in the community ever since then. Now, the kind of things that I've been doing, I've got three companies that I'm forming or have formed. And uh, these companies are uh, things that make what I think is awesome contributions to the fractal blockchain. I'm going to tell you real quickly what, what those contributions are. The first one is Quintric.com. That's something we formed uh, in uh, 2018. And it, uh, it does gold-backed legal tender uh, cryptocurrency. And uh, so what I'm up planning to do is to uh, put that gold back token, a thousand quints is equal to one gold coin in our depository in Utah. And, uh, and so you can take delivery of that gold coin anytime you want, or you can leave it in there and trade it. So I think that that uh, gold token, which is a very stable currency, is gonna be something that we can put on the, the Frackley blockchain and allow people to use it. And that gives people on ramps and off ramps through Quintric uh, to, to send in their, their dollars and get them converted to quints and, and, and onto the blockchain and ability to check back out in dollars anytime they want to. The, the second one is uh, Carrot Swap. That's an app that, uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see if I can, can read my fine print here. Yeah, for earning quints at a chain store purchases. And what I think that will do is, you know, right now, uh, you go into any of the big box stores, I got about 500,000 of them nationwide that we've already signed up deal with. And uh, what we'll be doing is people can go there, get like up to 20% back on every credit card purchase they make. And uh, and then that will be put into a uh, <clears throat> a document or, or, you know, put into something that they can all uh, collect quints from. And I think that will bring all kinds of new users uh, into the faculty environment. What I'm offering to do there is to have the, the uh, quints that you earn uh, get delivered on the faculty blockchain. The third thing is SovereignSky.com. This is my magnum opus. And uh, this is a, a faculty blockchain in orbit. So uh, Sovereign Sky is going to orbit uh, up to eight nodes. Uh, four of them will be space telescopes that people can access. And, and command to, to collect pictures. And, and those space telescopes will produce NFTs of the imagery that people can then trade and, and, and use. So I think that uh, the uh, Sovereign Sky, what I'm offering to do is to put a Frackley node in space. What does that do for you? Well, if it's in space and you can specify that your smart contract executes in international space, that gets you out of the regulatory domain of all the other countries in the world. And so I think that'll be, be a huge thing. I uh, also formed a uh, uh, one of the top three uh, teams. It's called Fractally in Orbit. And we meet once a month to talk about things to use that Fractally node for. Uh, this week, uh, what I did was I submitted three applications uh, for a total of $65 million to, uh, in funding to King's Council and Trust, which is a, a Hilton family office affiliated trust with over $2 billion. And so, I've got the rest of the month to turn in all the paperwork, the uh, uh, the various documentation they want, and to make uh, three movies that uh, will we'll do that. So th that's what I'm working on right now. It's keeping me pretty busy. That's it. Uh, Gregory, you're, you're uh, muted. It, who, thank you, Stan. And who will you hand the baton to? Oh, let's go uh, straight down to Dan Singre. All right, Dan. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Stan, and thank you very much, Gregory and Perry. Uh, it, 
it's great to meet you, Stan. I've heard a lot about you. And Gregory, it's great to finally see you in one of these meetings. Mm -hmm. I'll share a bit of the presentation to show what I've been doing to help practically over the past week and past uh, other amounts of time as well. I started out here because I love the website and I refer to it very often and it also looks beautiful. I read the article pretty closely um, for the refinement of token distribution math and I've just been really excited about all these new changes that we uh, proposed and that we are passing and enacting in this um, Genesis Fractal. I also spent a lot of time working on the website EdenCreators.com. It was previously pretty messy and I just made it a lot simpler. Basically the goal is to empower creators and communities with Web3 and help everyone cooperate fractally to make the best experience possible. And I added a link to the Eden Fractal, which I've been uh, hosting, and videos, and a page called Garden, and a page for events and about. I'll show you these pages briefly. The about page is what there used to be. Uh, the home page is kind of like a big artwork that I've been uh, working on a, a, a little bit about how we're creating exciting videos and music and so forth. One of the reasons why I'm recording this to help people understand fractally and enjoy fractal cooperation. And then there's lots of artwork from a while ago. Uh, and then we're also aiming to create and plant seeds for lots of fractal communities for all sorts of fun and helpful purposes. I've been curating the Eden Creators YouTube channel um, and uploading videos from all of our Eden Fractal events every week and our Eden Town Halls where we talk quite a bit about fractal governance and also the past fractal genesis meetings and then alien worlds fractal meetings i participate in and several other meetings throughout uh fractally and eden and eos i also started to put together a little intro playlist as well with more um so that's all coming together to provide a resource for people to watch all these videos and learn more about fractal governance and i also put together a page called garden which is a little bit fractal partially to sh uh, share a bunch of notes that I've been working on and ideas and provide a place where I can kind of put out some informal blog posts and then also to share a bunch of the fractal communities I'm aiming to start. This video I made a while ago, which explains that a bit more. And then there's a whole bunch of posts here. A lot of these are kind of early drafts, but you can click on each one of these and then um, see a lot of information about fractally and so forth. There's a blog post there. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here as well. And then I also put together an events page um, with various events from around the uh, fractal communities, feature the Genesis fractal and then the EOS communities and the Alien Worlds fractal and stuff like that. And then put some pictures for all these events to provide a resource where people can come and learn about all these events. I included the um, Genesis Fractal Go logo as well there. And I started to work on a Pomelo pitch where it's just basically explaining all of these things that Eden Creators is doing, but uh, doing it in writing and so forth. And I'll be publishing that soon. And then I also made some updates to the EdenFractal.com website. I added a new kind of uh, top line motto thing and then added a video section and details pages. And I just made some better art to make a cleaner experience and then added all the videos from the Eden Fractal events here. And then I added a details page that um, just has more descriptions and a bit of art as well, just to help people inform people about that. I hosted the Eden Fractal event this week and I retweeted Felix's tweet about it. And then I put out um, tweets from the Eden Fractal channel or Twitter account for the EOS and Eden distributions. And I did a MSIG uh, to process those transactions. And I also participated in the first Fractal Fiction uh, event this week, which is basically we used a form of a Fractal governance process the Eden process to elect writers and help um, make a story for a book that an, an artist is making. Uh, so that was a really cool and fun event as well. And then I co-hosted a conversation about that, which Felix posted and made timestamps. And I talked about a little bit fractally and Eden fractal on the uh, chief delegate call. And then I retweeted Dan's tweets as well. Sorry if that was a bit long, but thank you for listening. Thank you, Dan. Uh, who would you pass the baton to? I will pass the baton to Nuno. All right, Nuno, you're up. Okay. Wow, guys, this is Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> I made a couple of tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, guys. Wow, wow, really cool. Really cool. You're getting good at it. Okay, guys, I did really compare with you all, guys. I, I really, I really little, but I think it's it's with good heart. Um, I, I Oh, your your volume. Yeah, you just broke up a bit, and we don't hear you. Don't hear you. Can't hear it. It's okay now. Yeah, it's good. There yeah. we go. 
Cool, cool. Okay, so I made a couple of tweets uh, and not that much, uh, but uh, with good art, uh, with from the bottom of my heart is what I want to say. So I post them here on the chat. So it's very little, but it's with my heart. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I will save time. I will pass to. I didn't came last last meeting, so I was ranked. I wasn't ranked. Uh, the last uh, I joined it was I, I think was number one or two. I don't remember to be honest, but kind of those, those numbers. And I will pass to Lenny. And thank you all to be here and and, and keep this moving. Thank you guys. You made it in the second round. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks, Nuno. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> Beginning of mistakes. Classic. Beginning of mistakes. Round two, Classic. you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Classic. Now, for those that do not know, and I know as lead one who are not very familiar to me, I'm a kind of guy, I'm a fly in the corner of a spider who listens in and try to catch up everything. Not a producer in any form, but read a lot, think a lot. So basically what it came to eventually a year back is that I do the recaps. That's my main thing. Focusing on Eden initially and then uh, Fractally and also EOS. And I'm looking to expand it further, look at the different sites, et cetera, et cetera. For two reasons. People are too busy to sift through all this volume of information. And the whole idea is basically stripping it down so that you have one place where they maybe trust my judgment. What I believe is important for people to know, they glance through it to see if they miss something. And that's why I mentioned it that way is because someone just stated and said, that's the number one value. Because I've been worried that people do not read and rather go to my recap instead of looking through the long posts and the, all that spam and whatever, which almost has become in some channels. And But no, he do it as a vetting tool afterwards if he did miss something. And that becomes even more effective because I'm, since I'm reading it anyway, assimilating it and f pondering on it, why not share it? Do a little bit, uh, what do you call it, synopsis in English or something? Basically curated synopsis, just the links, just give a hint what it is about. And if it's worth checking, do so. Otherwise, go by. It's a matter of saving time for others, a bit of community service. service. But then also a secondary item is you actually then teasing other people because like I did the fractally uh, recap, I do it weekly, did it earlier today, posted it. And then I share it on different channels, EOS and similar, not outside of EOS IO, but still share it around a bit because in our fractally gang, we're not that many. EOS, at least in Telegram, have about, what is it? Plus 10,000, you know, uh, uh, accounts, maybe it's half as many. So it serves as a promotional teaser a little bit also. What happens? What do we talk about? So it can actually stimulate. Looking at building up a website, but that's future. And how more to expand this and make it more valuable. But that's basically me. And that's, I'm just talking what I do fractally because fractally get only a fraction of that. And my time is similar. I haven't done any invites at all this week. And last meeting, I was at level four thankful for that because previous six seven weeks i never came above two but i was sick and i was a bit of everything so that was fair enough okay i yeah there's no one left i give to gregory you're the chairman <laughs> <laughs> no worries thank you thank you thank you all for your uh, contributions really appreciate that um we'll begin um remember in the second round we start with level eight and then we go down to level three so uh I'm going to uh, put a marker here in the chat window. And uh, I, I think what we'll do is what's traditionally done, we'll put in a name who we think is ranked highest in this meeting. So you'll put uh, one Hive name account in here. Uh, go ahead and type it into your chat buffers and then uh, get ready to press enter in five seconds. Are you guys ready? No, I'm not ready. Uh, so we're listing the top person or we're the top three? Just the top. Just okay. the, the first round, we did the top three. This round, we're going to do just as we've always done, where we're going to go level eight, level seven, level six, five, four, three. So we're just doing the top level right now, which is level eight. So you'll type one name in five seconds. Um, let me know when you're ready. All right, everyone. Five, four, 
three, two, one, go. Oh, all right. Well, uh, looks like we have four of six on me. So um, thank you. I appreciate that, everyone. All right. The next level, we'll do level seven. And get ready to uh, enter your entry in five, four, three, two, one, go. Ooh, all right. Well, let's see here. Looks like we're really split here. So we need to have some dialogue here with regards to level seven. Does anyone want to issue any questions to their candidates or alternate candidates here? Uh, okay. Um, I see two for Dan Singjoy and two for Stan. Uh, May I just for myself, I actually want to talk against myself because I'm not a producer and producers do not create. They, they work more as a catalyst. My role is more like a catalyst, not actually a promoter as well. It's just to make more time for producers. Let's put it that way. So I kind of don't value that as high as the manufacturing side of things, let's put it that way, and making it happen in action. So I would not mind to be sli sliding down a bit. I'm gonna say you are quite valuable, Lenny, because you are saving people's time across the entire community. I value that, I value that. Uh, think about how much time, think about saving the time of Dan or Aaron or anybody who's building these things, uh, that's more time, for, that, that's more product for the whole community. So time savings, mm -hmm. keeping up with everything is, I, I value that quite highly. Now, Dan, it, I, Dan knows I love him and, and, and I appreciate his contributions, but I'm gonna do two things here at once. I'm gonna say, Dan, I'm going to call you out for copying my dnews.zone. <laughs> and, and, and Dan's the only one that knows this, but I'm trying to get him to join me in my effort. So I'm going to, I want to down, I want to downvote Dan and at the same time reaffirm my invitation to join me. So, yeah. So don't vote for Dan. Forget Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Perry. I, I appreciate the, the the kind words, and uh, 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 I mean most of the words are kind. And I'm uh, and I'm also looking forward to speaking to you more. D news. It's not meant to copy at all, but I I saw your message and I'm looking forward to talking with you a lot more about that. I think what you're doing with D news is amazing too, and and super helpful. So yeah, thank you very much for. They're all kind. They're all kind words. So if it helps, I'm going to publish the, again the, the mission statement of the Genesis Fractal. Our goal here is to come to consensus with regards to the contributions that are made that align with the mission statement that we all ascribe to. Um, do we want to run another uh, level seven vote um, and see what we come up with? Remember, we have 18 minutes left. Um, I'm going to put the level seven marker here. Um, if you're all ready, uh, let me know um, and we will vote a second time. All right. And we'll do so in five, four, three, two, one, go. Yep. Yes. Wow, guys, we're not there yet. <laughs> we are not there yet. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I see that Stan uh, changed his vote to himself, and I think Gregory changed his vote to me. Um, I'd be happy to... I voted Stan uh, both times. I don't know if vote's the right word, but I think that... Uh, Stan's doing great work with these uh, existing and successful businesses that can bring a lot of value to Fractally and then also helping to lead the Fractally and Orbit team. Um, so 
and then also just is, is Stan's done like amazing work and um, I'm sure also helped guide uh, Dan and, and the Fractally team in many ways as well over the years too uh, so that's my reason why I think it should be uh, Stan I'm, I'm happy to go uh, uh, with however people want to think but also if Stan wants to be seven and, and, and I thought that Stan should be seven um, that that was my yeah, opinion we, there what are we thinking what are we thinking we none of us would be here without Stan what, 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 what are we doing <laughs> That's true. That is true. That is true. <laughs> where's your, Where's your wife, Stan? <laughs> uh, 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 you're muted, Stan. Yeah, she's off behind me, behind that Nazca stars. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, there's no doubt. I have no problem <sighs> whatsoever to have Stan in the next level. I mean, he's done tremendous a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. I thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. All right. So shall we take okay. another, another round here? Level seven. We've got 16 minutes. I'm going to do a level seven here. Um, and uh, if you're ready, uh, let's do this in five, four, three, two, one, go. Wow. Okay, we've I'm we're, sorry. <laughs> we're coming closer here. We're coming closer. Where are you from, um, Stan? <laughs> so, 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 Stan, we're we're coming really close, but we need to get to that four out of six. Uh, does Wait anyone? Uh, we're, we're, we're we voting again on level seven? Yeah, yeah because I, we only have fifty percent. We need to get beyond that. Oh. Oh. Well, now stand oh, by your stab. Stand. I thought we had. Oh, I, we had over to me. I, I thought we were going on to the next level. Sorry. Yeah, but, that's that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right. So we'll assign a stand level seven. Congratulations, Stan. All right. Thank you. We're going to go to level six. And if you're ready, again, we have 15 minutes for level six. Uh, five, four, three. Two, one, go. All right, let's see, what do we have here? Okay, one. Yeah, that looks like me. That means that means you join me, Dan. That means you join me. <laughs> yeah. now, uh, let's see, well, we're, we're close, Perry. We're, oh yeah, Perry, get up, Perry. I think so, I think so. All right, congrats, all right. Yeah. Great. All right. Uh, thank you for your uh, the the Dino Dino's. By the way, appreciate it. You're welcome. Right. My pleasure. Now we're going to go for level five voting. All right, and get ready to post in five, four, three, two, one, go. Dan Sing Joy. We got one more vote coming in here, Eleni. Okay. Um, well, Dan, looks like uh, you've got level five here. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. All right. Now we are on level four, and we're going to make that vote in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, go. Lenny, it's unanimous. <laughs> Nice. All right. And then Nudamar, uh, level three. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to post the list here just to confirm I got all the spelling and order correct. Please review. review. Does everyone uh, agree with the list? Yes. All right, then. Where do we post this? The same uh, Hive blog, or? That's correct. We're going to use the same Hive post. There's a 15 minute window between the first and second round. So Joshua and I will have uh, ample uh, availability in the uh, Hive post to determine which was round one, which was round two. So go ahead and take this list and post it into the Hive post. You're going to just hit reply.
And uh, while you guys are doing that, uh, if you have any uh, questions with regards to Addendum 1 or want to have a conversation on other things fractally, we have time to do so here, if you like. What is the significance, if any, of who won here today, of the order uh, that we, the order, like the first, second, third, what is the, is there any significance to the, the amount of points we gain or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, okay, so good, good question. Um, so yes, uh, Fibonacci, uh, or originally we, we had six rounds and then we would do another, in, I'm sorry, six people in a group would be Fibonacci ordered, 21 respect, 13 respect, eight, five, three, two. Uh, higher levels are in higher respect. So uh, a level eight would earn 55, and then you can go down accordingly. Um, when we were looking at uh, the development of Addendum 1, we originally thought we could have multiple rounds, four, five, six rounds, depending on the size of the community. But we started seeing that there could be error ratios involved with that. When you uh, have multiple rounds, like four, five, six rounds, many times you'll have people that have contributed quite significantly ending up the last in a group of, of six, even though they contributed significantly. And so an error ratio would start popping up as a result. Too few rounds, you wouldn't get enough in information. A single round, that is, would introduce too much noise. Uh, too many rounds also interview, uh, intervene with an error ratio. So um, Dan suggested two rounds. And in two rounds, you'd make a clear cut with regards to those that contributed more significantly in the first round. And then the second round, you would be able to thus rank accordingly from there. And then from those two rounds, you'd be able to get a group of uh, rank eights, in essence, that would be would form a, a council. Should we have a council and a proposal or a level of number of proposals with which to pass? So the most valuable contributors who have put in their, their heart, soul, and spirit into making the mission statement a reality for the whole community could review proposals put forth and ensure that that percolates to everyone in the community. So that's why this method is being applied. But in answer to your question, yes, uh, the levels change. Now, you won't get the uh, actual 21, 13, 5, 3, 2 uh, ranking because we're now applying a formula to uh, take the million tokens issued for the first week and then a sub sub million the second week and there is a um, emission schedule of tokens that will be applied to the respect that you earned in a pro rate of fashion and so the numbers you're going to see in the upcoming tally sheet are way bigger than what you expect um, this ensures that early adopters to the fractal um, are rewarded for taking a chance and risking on an early fractal and investing their time, effort, and energy in an early fractal to get rewarded. So early adopters get rewarded. Uh, that emittance structure is set up to uh, at year uh, just before year five starts at year four and three quarters gets to a 5% inflation rate. And again, that inflation rate is distributed amongst uh, our contributors, staking, uh, teams, social media contributions, et cetera. And it'll be up to uh, uh, the community through its council to rebalance those if, if they're needed. Maybe a, a particular fractal uh, favors social media contributions a little bit more than they would uh, favor something else. But right now, everything is set up as 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. Now, you won't see that in the spreadsheet because we haven't gotten to that level. This is really a kind of a, a trial fractal that help us optimize fractal governance. Um, but uh, these steps and everything that we're doing here helps us get there and refine the effort. And as you can see, while um, in, my, in my past meeting, uh, 
and early on in the in the in the initial meeting people were or there was an individual that says well i don't know if this is competition are we really developing something here but you'll note a lot of changes that have taken place purely by our participation and how things have uh, developed the questions people have asked the feed feedback that we're getting in this genesis fractal have contributed to making this process better and better so yeah. and that's clear that's clear dan is listening everybody you're listening everybody's listening to what's being there they, they want that feedback yeah uh, I, other I'm questions? Not, oh please go ahead okay. other questions I, i'm still not clear like how many points will i get on on, let's just take myself for an example. I'm ranked third in this group. It's it's not it's not a clear uh, answer as to how many points I would get. That's. It sounds to me what you said was that I'll, I'll get some an, an amount of points which will inform some other source of inflation that I will receive. Is is that fair to say? Y yes. So so you you in the old system. You, if, if you rank to level six, that's a Fibonacci sequence of 21. Okay. Uh, if you rank a level uh, three, that's a, uh, a Fibonacci sequence of, of, of five. But because a million tokens are going to be issued in the first week, and then there, there's, a, there's a curve that goes with that, but the first million is even it's not evenly distributed is distributed based on uh the rank that you achieve and it is averaged out over your rankings for the last six weeks so i can't really give you a hard and fast number until the tally sheet until all these uh data points are entered in you'll you'll actually get to see it but in essence that million tokens is broken up between all of us based on a the respect that you've earned this week averaged out over the last six weeks so if you were uh let's say you're ranking a six for the last six weeks so you probably get uh, a a more significant amount of the million tokens that are out there distributed to all the participants here uh than someone that ranked five over the last now uh, many of us have different rankings over the weeks, so we take an average of that, and that average number will be used in the Fibonacci sequence. Now, granted, we're using Benoit's formula because Fibonacci is even integers. You know, you have specific integers, that is. There's no decimals. But Benoit's formula, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, a mathematician uh, hundreds of years ago uh, said, well, here's how we can calculate the Fibonacci sequence um, uh, when uh, you want to um, apply that over an average. Now you have a decimal number. Well, what does that decimal number represent? And so we're using that formula to remain as true as we can to the Fibonacci sequence and yet apply distribution across all these tokens. So again, you'll have to kind of wait till the tally sheet comes out. And as Dan gave a caveat, we're making small changes to get the formula just right. So but, as, uh, as, it sounds to me like today's ranking doesn't count for anything because it'll be much more than six weeks before the the blockchain is up and starting to hand out tokens. Is that right? Well, yeah. So there's there's a question. Are we going to start the six, six weeks looking at meetings 22, 21, 20, 19, 18? Or are we going to start now uh, where your average is what you get now? And I think we're going back. I think the average starting now back to six weeks. but. I'm waiting for confirmation with that. So I don't have a clear answer for you on that. Stan. How do you apply uh, non-attendance if it don't show up? Is that a zero or? Yes, skip so, it? so good question. Non-attendance would not rank you a zero actually, because you have that sliding window of averages. Even if you don't participate for a week, you're still gonna get ranked. It's still gonna be averaged out. Uh, you will get a, a a zero in respect for that particular week, yes. but because it's averaged out, the value will be much greater than zero. If you're, say, a six and you get a zero for the week, you get a five point something, if you will. And that five point something times whatever the iterant, uh, the admission is for that time, a million this week, 900 and something thousand the next week. That makes week, sense. 
Yeah. So uh, you get sick time, if you will. You can look at it as I think James Mark said it's. I get my doctor's ticket. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now, if you don't participate for 12 consecutive weeks, then you could be booted out of the, the community for it being inactive, if you will. So there is that. We have two minutes remaining. Any other questions? Or you can wait uh, for them to remain. Yeah, sure, Nuno. I have a question, just a second for my example too. So uh, I reached the second level, but uh, I was trying three. So um, there is nothing, um, I will not have any kind of conversation. I will be equal all weeks, just like I was trying maybe. So, uh, so the, uh, the, the rank of, in the second round, the rank of three is no different than getting the top rank in the first round. It's it's exactly the same. There is no increase in respect. You will get respect, uh, but it won't be any more than the in the first round, the, the top person who got uh, a rank of three there. But we'll have nothing uh, had to the average along, along the times? Along, oh, yeah. Time. It, yeah, of, of course. It, will be, it, it still gets averaged in. Yeah, it's still, let's say you got six for the last five weeks, and then you got three. So your average between all of that is probably 5.7. I'm just doing the math in my head here. Yeah. Um, it, it, would, it would get averaged out. Now, Stan asked a question, does the average window start now, or are we going back six weeks? I think we're going back six weeks, but I'm checking with, with Dan and um, Mike uh, to ensure that um, the spreadsheet is is correct because uh, Dan... anything anything we earned before that is is flushed down the toilet. So I have no. To... I don't think I so. No, it. no, no. All that data remains. We're just changing the formula, but none of that none of the 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 past rankings goes away. All that counts. All that data counts. I don't know if it's going to end in five Two seconds, seconds. Uh, but great meeting you. If it does end, <clears throat> hey guys. Thanks all. Good one. Thank I, you. I, I, there, there might still be 60 guys, seconds though from Joshua. I don't know. Uh, it, uh, it has to still be a 60 second pop up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Well, have a good day or evening or whatever it is up in front of you. <laughs> you too, Lenny. Thank you. Man. Great meeting with you guys. See you. Guys. See Recording in progress. All right, everyone. Thank you for the great experience. It was uh, fabulous to see uh, such a so many great contributors in the second round. Um, I'd love to hang around and chat, but uh, I've got an event going on here, so I've got to go. So thank you, guys. Uh, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, Thank Dan. You. See ya. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Um, I would imagine uh, that there's probably a lot of people over. Well, actually, I, I should check. But I, are there people over in the Discord um, that are still chatting? Uh, OK, there's a, there's a few. So basically, we could just do a quick post-mortem here and get some feedback from all of you. I think that would be really helpful. Um, and then anybody who wants to can rejoin up with the rest of the crew that's still sticking around in the Discord channel. Uh, I don't know, just an idea. I've just posted the link in the chat. We're using the same blog post. The timestamp helps us uh, determine, you know, wh which which group is which. So um, just post your results as a comment as you normally do on the same blog post. If, if you haven't already. James, hopefully we can do a post vetum. Yeah. <laughs> funny Mike, funny. Yeah, that was a good that was actually a good one. <laughs> Hopefully Semantics. no one knows Latin because I have no idea if that's true, if that's the accurate word, <laughs> the right word. Oh uh, can you say what you were saying again, James? What was your proposal? Oh, it was just to, if anybody has some feedback, uh, I would just personally be interested in anyone's feedback on how the second meeting went for you. Um, my feedback is that uh, I was 
as I expected, blown away by the contributions of everyone in my group and found it pretty difficult to do a, a relative ordering. Um, but we did achieve consensus and uh, I think I had a lot of fun and we had good conversations. So um, that was my feedback. What's up, Matt? <clears throat> my feedback, uh, similar to James's, um, much more difficult. The level of contribute uh, contributions and contributors was higher by design, right? So we're concentrating these high values and we're asked to discriminate among them. More difficult. So I think that's, you know, the white paper, it what you know, is vetting itself. It's It worked as was supposed to. Um, two other observations were uh, uh, that the level three, like there's two level threes going forward, right? There's a level three from level one, from round one and level three from round two. And that level three from round two spent a full 45 minutes with us mining and asking questions and learning. And they're making a huge investment and getting no payoff. So that was just a, uh, you know, some feedback. We were, we discussed this in my group. We were sensitive to that. Um, and uh, in my mind, I had to go to, because it was more difficult to discriminate, I had to go to teams. Who's a member of a team? I'm gonna weight that higher than an individual contributor. So the team concept really played a more important role for me. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, we, had, we had some challenges. Um, uh, I would say that um, there, there was one point where, uh, you know, when you, when you have so many good contributions coming out, um, it does get very challenging. I, I can only imagine uh, if we stuck with the original white paper and went to a round three, round four, round five, how much more difficult and subjective it would be. Um, that said, Daniel's last post from 19, 20 hours ago brought up the point that you could have really good contributors uh, ranking low, uh, on, you know, and, and you know, in, in that you'd start getting an error ratio uh, that would start cropping up. Hence why we went to uh, two rounds, um, which I think made uh, a lot of sense. Um, early on, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, when I first read it, I'm like, gosh, how is that going to work? But actually going through the experience seems to make a lot of sense. I, I think between James and, and Dan, they noodled this out really well. Um, so thank you. All right. Looks like Brandon's up next. Yeah, it's anecdotal. I mentioned this in our, our meeting, but uh, to date, I'd say about 80 to 90% of the time, by the time it gets to ranking time during our meeting, uh, voting goes, well, ranking goes uh, uh, very close to how I predicted, if not exactly how I predicted. This time, it was wildly different because there were so many heavy hitters in our group. It was, to, to echo what James said, really difficult to, to rank all of those people relatively. Um, and that did take more time because of that. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe the first uh, meeting, um, the first round, uh, we, can, we can save some time, but I think it'd be hard to, to uh, shave off any time in the second one and possibly even might take longer. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Jorge. Jorge. Yeah, I wanted to say that, um, yeah, it was harder as uh, lots of people have already pointed out. In my case, as uh, we usually do, I focused on presenting my contributions, but then I realized uh, the other members of my group were showing the contributions of their teams. And uh, then I realized that I'm also part of a team and that I didn't do as good job as I could have done representing my whole team and the contributions they have done. Uh, so because of that, uh, this second round appeared to me as more a team's competition than an individual's competitions uh, of individual people. I wanted to say that. Thank you, Jorge. Yeah, the, the power of teams is uh, pretty pronounced, uh, agreed. All right, uh, Dan. Thank you, Gregory. Uh, yeah, so it was a great uh, experience and really interesting and uh, great to see so many great contributors. I have a question 
regarding the interim consensus process. So previously we did it where people who were ranked uh, six could vote to pass proposals. And so I'm wondering if that's changed. It will be uh, just people who are ranked eight can vote on proposals now, or can people who are ranked six or seven uh, still vote on proposals, or, or has that been decided yet? That is a really good question. <laughs> um, I think we need to, uh, we, we collectively need to have a, an amendment to the interim consensus process uh, because the structure has changed as you identified. Um, there's nothing, there's no proposal that's concrete uh, coming out of the fractal team right now, but um, I'm gonna make a note of that because that's a really great question and we'll discuss it this week and um, yeah, I'll get back to you. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Thank you, James. Eric. Yeah, one of the ch toughest challenges that a lot of us have is advocating for ourselves because it's so wide and broad of what we do. And one of the things that made it in our group was other people knowing the other people enough to advocate for them. Like Dan advocated for James, I was advocating for me. That's because we knew their con co uh, contributions and Felix also uh, advocated for Matthias too. So the, the one of the things that made it work so much in ours is the people got help advocating for themselves. And I wonder how do we teach people or make it a better process for people to advocate for themselves, even whether it's a, a template or a, a common format just that people can use to say, you know, here's, here's how you do it. Uh, I mean, the, the template I use is, here's what I did to make myself better by learning, here's what I did to make myself better to sharing, and here's what I did that had few, you know, immediate impacts, and here's what I did that might have future impacts. I don't know if that's help but i think if we think about the task of making helping each other advocate for ourselves and then deal with the uh, idea that if somebody knows you they can advocate for you too and what's the role in that yep another another vote for the power of uh, uh teams uh thank yep. you for that um i see some some commentary here real quick with regards to uh uh, round one, round two. I would like to say that, um, you know, this is our first time, so bear with us. And I do appreciate the the sharing of feedback. Um, you know, uh, Joshua and I had a number of conversations with regards to how do we manage this process with the two rounds and uh, ensuring that uh, people are able to get to round two. So this is a manual process. We don't have an actual app. And so we were trying to figure out the best way with which the round, pe round one people can still participate. And we thought we, we did contemplate having a second Zoom link and allowing uh, those round two participants to use the second Zoom link. But we were also concerned that uh, someone who may not be familiar enough with the process, click on the Zoom link, join the meeting um, when they weren't meant to pass on to round two. So we thought we'd try this, where we would provide the Discord channel for people to continue the dialogue. But I totally get that it would be nice to be able to keep them in the main room so they can connect with one another while the round two is happening. It's probably more, more optimal. So Joshua and I will continue that, that dialogue. But keep in mind, we, we did consider that. And um, we're, we're looking to find better ways. And so um, keep the feedback coming. Yeah, I'm a pretty strong vote for people moving on, click a new link, and then if we have to, we can kick people out of that second meeting that weren't supposed to join or something like that uh, is how I see it. But I, I yeah, I agree. I, I thought it didn't feel quite natural to ask people to leave the uh, first meeting. Thank you, James. Thomas. How you doing? Um, so just my some quick thoughts I had constructive criticism, not not complaints. So like my experience, um, round one, I was a sh would have been a shoe in I'd say for level six. It just m more luck, probably more than that I had anything I super outstanding to contribute. Although I I had some things, but um. Hold on, Jess. 
Sorry about that. Um, so I would have been a level six in round one. So then I go to round two. And so I'm a level four. So I'm thinking in regards for like, first of all, the level three from round one and to get a level three in round two and to do an hour extra on a Saturday with all the feedback and, and that extra work that that is. I know if I was a level three, that would not sit, that would almost de-incentivize me from, it takes a little kind of uh, steam out of the engine of really like enjoying this process. And then like for those that could have been like a level six in round one, now they go to round two and then they get um, maybe a level three and they did, you know, I, I just think there's some probably contemplation on incentives that are needed because it might turn people off from wanting to stick around for an extra hour. Even like if you get level three in round one, even if you got level four in round two, it's a difference of three respect tokens. So I feel like you really might not want to roll the dice unless you think you're getting a level five or more, which you're running into super stiff competition. A lot of people, you know, it's, uh, but I get, I, I get in the grand scheme of things, you know, they're, if everyone's contributing more, I mean, if the whole project is growing in value, that's better for everyone. So, but just my initial raw thoughts and feedback on on what I experienced. This was something that was uh, anticipated and uh, Dan did speak about in uh, his uh, papers. Um, uh, these documents uh, that, he, that he put forth did uh, recognize that that could be an issue. But at the same time, um, you know, contributors uh, that move to the second round um, really, you know, need to make a decision. I, I think what one thing that, that Joshua employed, which I had never considered, is during the first round asking people who wants to proceed to round two. You know, all the contributions there are there on the table. Everyone has shared what, what they've done. And in his meeting, three people raised their hands and that made that particular process really easy. Um, that said, Dan has also shared that this is an imperfect process. You know, everything is very subjective here. Our value systems are, are different. We all are aligned on uh, uh, the same mission statement, but how we weigh and value things is a, imperfect. And it is kind of part of the, 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 the formula, these nuances, if you will, as to, hey, I'm grouped with one set of people, I rank very high. I'm grouped with another set. It's a little bit more challenging because there's some really good contributors in there. So this is really part and parcel to uh, how things will happen here. I don't know if there's any way to improve that. I don't think assigning a, a, a level four mitigates that either, but I'm sure it will be given consideration. Uh, James, do you have any any thoughts to add on that? I have a lot of thoughts. Um, first, uh, just Thomas, thank you for um, asking that or talking about that because uh, and, and I want to, at the very least, tell you that everything you said was exactly what we expected and not a surprise. That the incentive structure that you walked through is precisely the one that we intended for there to be a disincentive to move to round two and all that. Those incentives are known. It's also an incentive because you may now go to level eight. You're, 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 it's, we're, we're balancing those incentives intentionally. Um, I have a lot of thoughts. I think this topic probably deserves a, a post of its own or something to um, to talk more specifically about it. And so I don't want to um, try to talk about it ad hoc right here, but I'll, I'll try to crystallize some, some thoughts into a post in the coming weeks. Thanks, Thomas. Felix. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I guess I was just gonna share kind of my thoughts as well kind of just feeding into the um the, the same ideas of, of like the importance of team so like uh yeah in that you know that second room it's hard to advocate for yourself but it's a little bit easier when you're advocating for your on behalf of your team um so that that was kind of what you know how that played out in into our room and um yeah i i think that 
yeah, that's probably really all I have to add. I think, but yeah, just I think it's it's cool to hear that uh, that that was something that was, you know, a common thing in, in other rooms as well. So, you know. thank you, Felix. All right, Jorge. Yeah, I wanted to say that um, on round first, I would have been in rank four, and on round two, I was also rank four. <laughs> so. Uh, I love this team, but still I have this feeling of having uh, contributed one extra hour of my time without any additional benefit. And I know uh, people already said this, but I just wanted to say it myself in order to emphasize and to let you guys know that it is a true general concern. Aside that, uh, I've always advocated for not self-ranking, but uh, Today, I noticed that I had to do it because I was representing my team. So uh, the whole thing of self-ranking versus not doing it uh, really made a, a, a world in my, in my head. Um, so yeah, when you, when you are representing your, your team, it's, it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. it, there's an there's a important distinction here. In the first round, we're only suggesting here, we're coming to consensus when, when, it, when it comes to those three people we're selecting to go to round two, uh, that they're just going to round two. Those three people are not being ranked in round one. They are just considered for ranking at the level two. Um, Dan suggested list the names in alphabetical order. So there's no specific ranking order placed, just alphabetically. So no ranking is assigned to you. I know you, you might you might look at it as well. I was ranked four on round one. Well, there is no more ranking uh, above three in round one. Your actual ranking comes from round two. So it's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, the the, the thing is that the way we did it in round one is well because we don't know, we don't have consensus of who is going to go to the round second. We just did as we used to do it before, uh, I mean, last week. So we rank level six, level five, level four, and then we took these th top three spots to round two. That's um, why everything devolved, well, evolved into this way. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you, Jorge. Brandon. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say this is also something that is going to average out over time. Um, you know, yes, you can end up uh, being in that first meeting and then the second meeting get a three and you would have ranked higher if we had the old system. But it goes the other way too sometimes. Um, and uh, I am a, a case of that uh, this week. So uh, I found myself in round one with Dan and James. So I was probably going to end up at around a level four if we had been using the old system. But because I was in the top three, I moved on to the next round. And in the next round, um, again, very difficult to, uh, to rank everyone, but everyone was gracious enough to uh, uh, rank me as a level eight. And so, um, yes, we can talk about the, the cases where it, it goes the, the wrong way for us, but we also have to understand there will be times where this actually does the reverse and gives us a ranking much higher than we otherwise would have had, um, averaging over time. Definitely a, a good case for uh, reflection on. Thank you, Brandon. All right, Mark. Mark? Uh, of course, the mute button, uh, step <laughs> one. Basically, uh, yeah, this is like a programmable governance, obviously, or I think it's not obvious, I want to say the word, because uh, that's kind of what we're, uh, we're all enjoying, is, uh, you know, this uh, ability to, uh, to uh, evolve this uh, kind of uh, approach toward making uh, what's already good, better and better and better and better. So I think we'll get past that sat line and actually be functional and successful personally, I think that. But good news is we can continue to improve it like today. A big uh, a big one on uh, this second round, uh, very exciting. 
Um, but uh, the reason I originally raised my hand was because one thing that emerged this week was revisiting how we organize our contributions. Um, and on, uh, uh, at least I, I did this week. And on a second look, I uh, earlier this week realized that uh, the, my product was something flirting with oversight. Uh, for my team, there's so much suddenly co going on that I uh, reorganized how I, how I present that. And uh, so I ended up uh, representing more, a little more for my whole team. And uh, boy, did that come out in, in both rooms. Uh, very visibly, we had an ability to discuss, you know, speaking on behalf of our, uh, our team. Uh, because uh, uh, one of our big purposes is realizing our value. So speaking to it and then having a conversation on it and then scratching your head, changing it, how you present it, and then respect coming your way for speaking to how, what your productivity uh, uh, elements were that week, uh, you know, based on, say, an oversight function or, you know, playing a, a uh, ambassador role or, uh, you know, setting up a, um, infrastructure for onboarding. Um, th these were like subsets of what we were all engaging in. You know, we have a very complex, uh, like a, a mellow pitch that gets us out there, for example, and we're kind of marketing a little bit or something, or Marco is a, 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 now works for Bywire, you know, <laughs> you know, with the media side of it. It's very subtle, enormous amount of value. And Jacques Cruz, um, with, with his, so anyways, uh, yeah. And then suddenly it comes up in waves of, of dialogue on the subject of how to James Mark just, uh, you know, uh, concurred that teams have a huge impact on productivity. Yep. So uh, all that is right on time. We're all seeing that now. And so I wanted to point out that uh, that team function is uh, a new visible layer that uh, we're learning a lot from right now. Another vote for teams. Yeah, teams are, are very, very, very powerful, very useful, and certainly something that we shouldn't uh, underplay as we're sharing our own personal contributions. Well said, Mark. Any other questions, thoughts? All right, Joshua, take it away. All right, we're doing pretty good on, on time. Uh, I think I'll post the link again to the Discord if you guys want to hang out, but we're going to end the meeting here. Technically, we're going to be trying to end it around 11 or not 11, uh, for me, it would be uh, 115. So we're like 10 minutes over today, but that's okay because we're uh, getting feedback, really valuable feedback from everyone. Um, so I'm oh. gonna put in the chat, uh, by the way, if you haven't already posted your uh, consensus result, you should have done that. And um, this would be kind of a last call to, to do it if for some reason you kind of got caught up in the discussion and forgot to do it. But here's the link to the voice chat in Discord if you want to jump over there uh, as we're getting ready to end this meeting. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next week. Um, th this is our new process going forward. And um, hope I hope uh, it just kind of keeps getting better and better. This went relatively smooth. There were some hiccups, I think, with having to kick people out of the room. That's kind of an abrupt change but from like a operational standpoint it just had to be done that way um for for today's meeting so we'll see if we can smooth out that process as gregory mentioned um also would encourage you to share contributions and uh additional feedback beyond just the recording here in this meeting uh, so if you want to write something that just makes sure that the point is getting emphasized or people who didn't get to see it or don't watch the recording that they uh they don't miss some of these things and I uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. Anything else? Uh, anyone else wants to say in closing? I'm getting the, the video queued up to to do the outro. I just want to say thank you to every one of you. Continue the feedback. Keep us up to date and to your thoughts and what you see, because ultimately we want to make the best platform out there. So uh, keep that information coming. And again, thank you for your participation. Okay, everyone, have a great weekend. Thanks, Joshua. It's a good <laughs> <laughs>